Bring with us the good. Okay, the meeting's called to order. Do we have, has everyone read the uh, minutes from the to it. in trouble with court. Excuse me. Um, so the pen, is it your turn? I'm not sure. We're going to say that from now on. Somebody will keep track. Okay, well, go ahead, Tom. Okay. Heather was. The, 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 la the last meeting, both of both them were in there, yeah. so it's a, a, a toss-up. Tom is one coin toss. Okay. And he's the okay. We have a uh, approval of the meeting. So moved. Have meeting minutes. Meeting minutes. Second. For May 24th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstention? Abstention oh, was there. That was win. The trouble. The uh, meeting minutes from June 14th, 2021. Is there any additions or corrections? There is a statement on page two, line um, 63. I don't remember us saying that we could restrict businesses um, within this uh, scenic byway over the end district. That's sort of the whole point of the district, isn't it? I, we I think the point was to restrict the appearances of businesses. Sure. Yeah, but That's not restrict business. We want compatibility within the neighborhood. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. I mean, I think what's the state that says you can't expect to business guy says. Yeah, I think the discussion, I, I wasn't there, but I watched it. I think the discussion was about whether, weren't you discussing whether or not a moratorium could be placed on uh, any applications within the scenic overlay district? Yeah. I think the, the figure was given was six months. Yeah. But I think this is separate from that. Yes, we, I don't think we're at this point in time. We're not, I don't think we're saying that we want to restrict businesses. We haven't said that yet. I don't I was, and that's what my feeling that we weren't going to restrict business, especially if we could talk about things. Yeah, and we also talk about ease of what you could see, not any 2,500 feet. Yeah, that, that bothered me. But the, I remember when the presentation was made on the uh, 
district. The point was made that we want to encourage businesses that will support tourism in those areas. Right. But I, I don't think Anything said about not having other businesses. Right. Would you like me to change that to say business appearances rather than just businesses? Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other comments? Can I hear a motion to approve the minutes? Mm -hmm. Made the corrected. Second. All in favor? Aye. I will abstain. I was not here. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. abstain. So now we'll open up the board to the privilege of the floor. If anyone has any statements they'd like to make or discussion about a topic that's not on the agenda tonight. There's a number of members who would like to speak about um, of the public who would like to speak about an agenda item, but it doesn't have a public hearing. Would you like them to come in now for the bridge of the floor? Let's wait until we get to that agenda. Okay. Item. All right. I would just like to say um, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to introduce uh, John Zipko. He's our new planner here at the Sound of Lanes. So please introduce him. Welcome, John. Here. Also, I have a code enforcement officer that wasn't able to make it tonight, but he'll be here next uh, at the next meeting. No privilege of the floor. Town board liaison report. Mr. Davis. Our last board meeting last Wednesday, 16. Um, first thing we had was a public hearing for special use permit commercial recreation outdoors for 320 per Um Had one comment on it, Mike Sigler. He didn't care about it. He lived very close. He was a little concerned that he didn't even know. Um, anyway, I think that was part of the purpose of the floor at that point. Uh, resolution authorizing special use permit for commercial and recreation outdoor plaza turf for the other three to be passed. I think we had some other issues, uh, especially with the boat, uh, driving away. But uh, other than that, I think they're working on that at this point. Presentation on the cable franchise agreement renewal franchise fee audit services by Michael Brown. We had a presentation on DeepSmart or Lisa Martin. Very informative. Uh, like I said, we didn't have any privilege before. We had Mike Steven and I think he said it was important to be close. Went on to the consent agenda, and I'll read through that. Motion authorizing the Conservation Advisory Council to Town Council to prepare a letter to point with us relative to the needs and fortunes. Resolution accepting the dedication of spur extension to Different Park Road along Roadway A to Phase 4, Phase 5 dividing line. Resolution appointing Sharon Jason to the Lanes and Housing Authority Board. Resolution hiring part time constable for the Lanes and Town Court. Resolution hiring full time information aid at the supervisor's office. Resolution scheduling public hearing for the public local law number 2 of 2021. A local law to override the tax levy limit. A resolution accepting resignation of Robert Jetty appointing Leon Harris to the Town of Lansing Advisory Committee on the Power Plant Future. A resolution authorizing the director of planning to execute a proposal to perform cable franchise renewal services, franchise fee not for the current company. Resolution filing town planner position authorizing. Filing of SB 4228 amending resolution 19 54 and reawarding lost vacation benefits. 
A resolution appointing town planner and stormwater management officer and organizational resolution number 21 59. A resolution approving town of Lansing participation in community campaign, campaign to lower resident energy costs. And a resolution approving audit and budget modifications in the supervisor. I will say two items came up and we were going to pull those out of the consent agenda. Number H was a resolution. Solution authorized the director of planning to execute proposal for the uh, cable franchise renewal. We talked about it and thought it belonged in, in the consent agenda, as well as uh, um, K, uh, resolution approving town of Lansing participation in the campaign to lower resident energy costs. Number 18, we had resolution creating motor equipment operator, water sewer maintenance work for title and, and for the town of Lansing. The resolution authorizing the purchase of by lease finance in case CX 160B excavated and case 650M Fowler Dozer. We went into the board member reports, which is all the stuff I come to them from you. <laughs> um, work session, we went into talk about discussion, development of moratorium and business uses in the RA's zoning district. Uh, and updates every two to late senior byway that was all done publicly. And we ended up being Joe Whatmore's suggestion that uh, we let CJ work on zoning and other different aspects of the possible mandatory on such situations and pushed it back at least one month for that reason. Any questions? Yeah. Doug, what's the Cornell Orchards? Can you expand on that? What's going on? Well, the Cornell Orchards are up on Swayze uh, right? So I, other than that, I really don't know much about it. Um, probably looking into here. I don't think they're going to buy it. Who knows? I don't know if anyone else is going to have it appreciated. Um, uh, just in brief, uh, the Conservation Advisory Council had met with uh, members of Cornell real estate staff and just asking them basically what their long term intentions are because they are considering a subdivision of land. I believe it's a minor subdivision, but uh, I believe that they're looking to divide the parcel in two. And I think it was just uh, essentially, a, you know, we're here like to work with you and whatever additional commentary Joe might have. Thank you very much. In person, is weird. Is it better weird or worse or weird? <laughs> okay, we'll discuss the Waza field and the turf field now. Um, yep, we'll admit the applicants. Hold on just a moment. Proposal. That's nice. Have something you'd like to bring up? Has somebody got YouTube playing in the background? Steve and Lamar. Lamar and Steve. Mm -hmm. Lamar and Steve, would one of you like to explain what changes you've made since the last meeting here? Looks like they're really substantial. Um, 
I was hoping that George Hunt would be on this call. And he's supposed and he's supposed to be Steve. He might just be late. I'm here. Okay. Well, I didn't see I didn't see you on there, George. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, there you are. I guess the um I, I got the list from the fire chief of what the driveway needs to be, and I'm I'm currently working on on uh, getting uh, quotes on on that. So the um, the driveway should uh, you know meet meet these requirements. And as far as the um, field, um, I was gonna I, I believe George was gonna cover that. Yeah, what, what else do you need from the site plan? The only thing that I the only thing that I see lacking would be the uh, pull off. Yeah. It calls for a sixty foot by fifteen foot pull off midway down the drive. Yeah, that should be on there. Um, I remember that being on the, the fire chief's uh, recommendations as well. Um, but that, yeah, part, as part of the driveway, there was a pull off and the, the other thing that I guess was updated is the driveway was moved closer to the, or the parking lot was moved closer to the driveway with a full pull through to create a roundabout type situation there. But I, I believe that there is a pullout. I think it's, labeled in white, if I remember correctly, from the uh, from the drawing. Yeah, it's not. So it'll have to be put on here because it's not on the map. DOT panel. Yeah, somebody referred to some DOT panels. Yeah, speak up or talk to you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, supposedly, I heard uh, someone that the DOT had a comment on the uh, proximity of the driveway to the crest of the hill. Is that, uh, was there something on that, CJ? Uh, yeah, I believe Steve uh, is coordinating with the DOT on the uh, entrance to the property. Perhaps you could expand more on that. and. Uh, while I have you, um, I believe the latest site plan submittal was received Thursday, May 27th. Um, I don't know if there's a newer submittal perhaps that I'm overlooking. Just wanted to confirm that was the case. Yeah, the, the uh, DOT sent me a list of requirements. They, they did not mention anything about the, uh, the hill, but the, the, the permit, the permit that they want filled out uh, asked for various things and those, you know, like how far can you see something two feet high um, from the uh, driveway and that that hasn't been done yet. I'm looking uh, to hire an engineer to do that. Were there any other, were there any other um items on the DT's list that we can turn up. I mean, we don't have that in front of us. Um, well, they, they said to uh, complete this permit and I mean, basically the, the driveway nearest the road needs, looks, looks like it needs to be paved. Um, we're up to like 30 feet or something. And after that, it can be, it can be a gravel driveway, but connecting to the highway, it looks like they want it paved. Otherwise they really didn't say anything. If you could get that, a copy of that to us, we'd appreciate it. Sure, okay. So Steve, um... I see on the uh, site plan here, it says new trees, size and type for city code. 
So we're not a city and we don't have any tree size or type in our code. So we're gonna to want to see in your next iteration here, uh, what you're proposing. What kind of trees do you guys want? That was your guys' idea, not ours. I think it'd be nice to have a shade tree in there. I know when I watch my kids' sports, it's great to be able to sit under a maple tree, full grown maple tree, and about the rest of the board. The way, the more than likely, the way the field will be set up off the road, uh, you more than likely won't get shade on the field. Um, it'd be pretty tough. To, to line the fields with trees. Oh, so um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying okay. it's nice. You know, you, you go to the kids' game and the kids are playing. It's nice to be able to sit under a shade tree while the kids are out playing. That, that's that's experience. Okay. okay. Is it, as opposed to evergreens, it might be nice to put some sort of shade trees there. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, would, I, I agree. I was thinking maples myself. I, I uh, Certainly, certainly can plant uh, maples. And probably, probably can even transplant them from all the woods on the property. There's certain maples that aren't happy with the environmental people. Like so so silver maples, maples would not be good if he's transplanting them from other another place on the property. So going to be willing to accept that. You could send the invasive species list. If you yeah. that, that probably will help you. As well. yeah, and and we not. weren't going to like the parking lot. I forgot. Did we talk about that? Did we discuss that last time? Um, but we have lighting up the yes. path. I believe they discussed um, the only comment from county planning uh, from the referral was to keep the lighting at 2700 Kelvin, the taller temperature. So uh, that was the only comment relative to the lighting. Any other questions or comments? Nice changes to the site plan. Yeah, that looks much better. Well done, George. The site plan looks much better than it did last time. Perfect. Now, much safer. Um, we get that wide spot in the road and put down maple trees on it. I think we're in good shape. And get the driveway where the DOT wants to be for safe uh, rest of the road. Get that engineer on the job. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I have a question on the uh, fire chief's comment. He uh, is noting that it should uh, have a hard surface. I don't think he's intending to say that it should be paved, but uh, basically, the specific specification, uh, Specification should be issued so the developer has something to shoot at. I'm knowing what he's going to have to put in the sub base, whether he's going to have to put fabric down, and what kind of compaction he's going for. I mean, just the words hard service, so a little bit, a little bit vague. Do we have some? Uh, Steve, perhaps you could speak to this. I, I believe that you had met with um, the fire chief on, on site. But I can uh, no. That. I, I I I didn't uh, meet with him. Um, uh, he 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 must have gone up there on his own. Um, okay. The fire chief is going much help in bringing specifications for a road that support heavy vehicles like the fire trucks. The highway department would be best line to be able to do that. Particularly if you want to clarify that people do not have to pay for road, because I hope the old foundation has uh, uh, specifications for uh, hard supported roads that do not have to be uh, paved. I think we have some specs in uh, 
planning department that will suffice if we can find it. Uh, and yeah, and uh, another thing that we can do is ask the new code enforcement officer to just meet with DOT and just get a handle on the road specifications or in, co in cooperation with the highway department. And see but this isn't the first time we've had a driveway that we wanted to have specified in such a way that the fire apparatus could get there. So we must have that information somewhere. Yeah, we may. Um, so we can or we that. certainly can get it from the highway department. We definitely have road specs, but um, I can check uh, on the um, private driveway specs if we have them. Yeah, we've done several of these long driveways. This is this is more towards a private road than private driveway. Yeah, we did one down to Dieter Higgins camp there a couple of years ago. That was a long one, and then to um, Dutch Harvest is a long one. And had to be specified. That's right. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Does anyone have anything else we'd like to uh, bring up? Public. Oh, it is public. We have a public here. Public. Can I hear a uh, motion for a public hearing? So moved. So welcome to public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Public hearings open. Anyone from the public have anything they'd like to add to this discussion? Do you have anybody on there? Uh, yes, but they are not. Okay. You want to close the public hearing? Move that we close public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Public hearings taken care of. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate you uh, your participation, and I think at the next meeting we should be able to, if we have all the information, we should be able to straighten things out. So the revised sketch that should show the, the widening of the spot and. Name those trees. Proper, proper location of the entrance. And yeah, they're going to get us the information from the DLP. And that we'll be also meeting, uh, Project Review Committee will be meeting on July 8th to review it in detail. So we should be able to turn around any specific comments to you shortly thereafter. Like driver specs. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks, Dr. Respect. Show the expanded driveway, name the trees, and that's it. The driveway spec. We'll driveway spec. There's evidently a um, a question as to the rope entrance, and I think that'll be taken care of in the DOP uh, application. Name some trees. Okay. Steve, we got to find some trees, brother. Do you have any questions? Um, no, I think that's set. Um, I will. Right. I will send you. I will send you what I got from the DOT. And yeah, I think we'll just. Yeah, we, we will plant maples probably. We'll, we'll identify that. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Meadowbrook Apartments is next with Scott Morgan. That's the landscaping. Here. Hello, George. 
Okay, what have you got for us, George? You're muted, George. We have a <laughs> microphone plugged in. Harry, hear me yeah. now? We can. Yes. Okay. Okay, so when I the changes we made from the last time we met, we sent you a revised site plan that showed the as built for water hydrants, the utilities of the existing buildings. We've moved the storage building back so it's more than 50 feet from the power line. We show the underground electric connections to the new buildings. And then Scott met with Lynn and Brad George came out and looked. And I think Brad wrote a letter and I prepared a drawing showing how the access where the fire truck comes around from the access road in front of Meadowbrook around the dumpster building that connects as it always had. And Brad liked this? Yeah, he said we just needed 20 foot of clearance and we've got over that anyways. And you got a bigger radius than the tightest one they need, so. Okay, will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zone regulation? Will the proposed action result in a change in the use of intensity of use of land, use or intensity? Nothing makes no impact. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? No. <laughs> Will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area? No. CBA? No. Will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic? or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? No. Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? Will the proposed action impact existing A, public or private water supplies, or B, public or private, Wastewater treatment facilities. No. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. Will the pro proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources, otherwise, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, or up? Water. No. Will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, flooding or damage, or a drainage problems? No. no. Will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? Second. The next deck and the resolution are all in one. So we will go ahead and uh, can I hear a motion and the resolution? Please? Motion to have uh, the resolution on the panel. Second. There is a second. You want to call the roll? I have a, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Uh, let's see. Um, item G. Page three, all plantings, including as shown on planting schedule described above. I'm looking for the planting schedule described above. There's no planting schedule described above. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, the plantings that are shown on the plan are existing, is that correct? Correct. Yes. They're mature maples out front, and then the spruce trees are behind the building in the front, and then really the other buildings are behind the other buildings. There's a privacy fence in there that's probably six, seven feet long by eight foot high. That would screen basically the apartments from the other building. And then the whole uh, east side is woods. I would just, just amend to say all existing plantings and take out the schedule. Okay. As amended. We'll vote on it as amended. Did you get that, Heather? Thank you. Aye. Yes. Larry? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. We'll um, place you in the waiting room, George, until the uh, next project comes up. Okay. Understood. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Scott. We're still discussing the Moravito project. That's correct. Um, so it's up to the planning board. Would you like to uh, admit applicants first, or would you like to admit uh, town consultants and Tim DeRusha from land or production engineering who provided updated comments? So Let's talk to him so we have something to talk to the applicants. Yeah, I'd like to talk. Okay, understood. Good evening. Good evening, sir. It's connecting to audio. Good evening. Are you, uh, you studied the new plan, I take it? The new submittals? Tom? Tim? Um, yep. Oh, I'm going to ask him to unmute. Oh, no. I didn't see any. Okay. Well, I had my mute on. Can you hear me okay? We can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we've, we've had the opportunity to take a look at the uh, latest revisions. And it offered some comments, and um, I think that was distributed to everybody. Could you explain the comments? Uh, two items. It seems that the truck or the unloading area, as it was indicated on drawing S1, was relocated to be directly adjacent to the newly proposed 40 foot by 100 foot garage building. Um, and when you look at the section on drawing, uh, I think it's S3, that section shows down at the bottom of the page a south elevation, I'm sorry, uh, at the bottom of S3 shows the canopy of the loading area, the offloading and loading area, and it shows that 27 foot wide canopy being basically right on top of the garage. Uh, two items that we had noted before. One was the requirement for a 25 foot separation distance from where the valves of this offloading area to a building with an option to be able to decrease that distance when there's fire suppression and or firewalls present. And then the other thing was the issue of any kind of a canopy being close to the building and there's a 15 foot separation requirement in the fire code that we did not bring up but we just noticed that uh, this afternoon they both of those items sort of uh are intertwined and they did make a note on drawing s s1 i believe it was you know that everything is going to be installed in accordance with nfpa 30 and other standards and requirements etc uh, but when we look at spatial separation requirements in the code, 
it definitely affects what's going on with the site plan. So um, I think those were the two main items and then trying to understand uh, one last piece was on the, I guess it would be on the west side, a transport pad of what that specifically is and being used for. And the concern on, on this is, that, you know, the loading rack is there's a lot of fuels being offloaded and loaded back up. Granted, it's all normally enclosed, but because it's such a, you know, it's a higher volume than what you see in a fuel uh, gasoline station, there are requirements for that separation. So vapors do not have chances of, of ignition. And then certainly if an unforeseen event occurred and there was a fire in the loading rack area with typically a truck and offloading hoses that you wouldn't want that to be spread to that garage building. And then instead of having just a gasoline trailer or fuel truck that's on fire. Now you also have an exposure to a building and then you have a building on fire at the same time. And I think we, we it reiterated that in the, some of our written comments. Thank you. Do you have any questions for him? No, it must be you explained it well. Thank you. We'll admit the um, applicant now. Um, let me just ask a quick yep. question. Uh, Tim, um, can you also comment on the, the smaller tanks um, as well? Yeah, the, yeah, that would be helpful. The code enforcement officer did um, mention to me um, some concern about the handling and storage of those. So. Are you talking of the LP tanks? Which tanks um, are you referring to? I just want to make sure I understand. This is small propane tank storage area. Oh, yes. Just a 30,000 gallon propane tank. Right. So that's just, uh, it's just a matter of making sure that that distance from the existing um, filling station area, which I believe might be on the far east side. I'm not quite 100% sure on that. Um, yes. To make sure that those propane tank storage areas are contained. And if there was a fire, it wouldn't expose the large 30,000 gallon propane tank. And typically what we find is, and again, not, not to say this is how it has to be done, but typically we see those is uh, some kind of a fencing. So if you did have a, a tank that ruptured and flew over, it wouldn't go underneath uh, the other large propane tank that, you know, the 30,000 gallon tank. So as long as there's a designated area and that distance, it appears to be okay, but we haven't, we don't have any details on how they're keeping those small propane tanks uh, in that specific area, nor okay. where exactly, nor exactly where they're, um, you know, filling and unfilling of those tanks occurs. If it's in the middle, I, I believe it's near that catch basin. The fencing you're referring to would be around the bottom of the 30,000 gallon tank? No, it would, be, it would be around that also that, you know, potentially that miscellaneous small propane tank storage area, maybe the sides facing, you know, the, the, the larger tank may sometimes have a barrier. So you don't have, because when I operate and when I visited the site, there, there was hundreds of cylinders that were anywhere from 20 to 40 to 100 pound, 200 pound, 450 pound cylinders that were just around that area. I mean, and that would be a concern. Um, and that's that was the other comment to, to make sure that that, and it looks like there's room to move that one way or another on this, on that site plan. That's not much of a problem. There's a way to fix it compared to what we're dealing with right now with a loading rack where it's, there's, it doesn't, sh it doesn't show any space to be able to make some movement. That's all. Do you have a minimum distance uh, for that in mind, given the, the number of the small tanks? I couldn't quite hear. Okay, do you have, uh, is there a distance uh, that we should specifically be looking for a separation between the small tank storage and the large tank? Yeah, I think I think his note. Um, I I don't know the number right off the top of my head. It it is covered in uh, 
the fire code of New York State, which is applicable, and it's also covered in NFPA, I believe it's uh, 58, which is the propane storage standard, which they've referenced down through here. And, and it's not too terribly large. I mean, it's not, uh, I don't think more than 15 or 20 feet. But I'd have to, I could double check on that and get back to the board for that if you'd like that detail. Are there any uh, particular construction, excuse me, requirements for the fencing that have to be of a certain kind? Uh, no, I, I mean, no, no, there's nothing that's specific other than if you can, if you've ever seen a, a even a 20 pound propane cylinder rupture um, and make a little, you know, not a little, a large fireball. Um, it goes along fairly well. So uh, the ones that we see are typically pretty sturdy uh, chain link fence or any other kind of barrier that they might want to put up. I mean, it's up, up to them. But it's not a, it's not a little plastic fence. Any other questions for Tim? Thank you very much. You're very welcome. With the applicants? Yeah. Okay. The ones that we see are typically pretty sturdy uh, chain link fence or any other kind of barrier that they might want to put up. I mean, it's up, up to them. But it's not. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Can, can you hear me you okay? Hear yep, we can hear you. So I guess the first question I have in mind is, why did we move the loading rack? Brett? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, we got a little bit of a delay there. Um, Are you on watching us on YouTube? No, no, I've closed out that browser window. Okay. Usually that's where the delay comes from. No problem. I think I caught the tail end of the question. Um, <clears throat> I heard the comments from uh, the consultant, uh, Tim, on the call, appreciate that commentary and some of the feedback that yeah, we, um, you know, construct these facilities in accordance with NFPA 58 and 30. Um, if there's some distance concerns between the canopy and the proposed garage building, we can certainly look at uh, sliding those um, to accommodate. We're certainly open to that to try and move some stuff around um, <clears throat> regarding the small, you know, staging area. Uh, for the smaller propane tanks, you know, if additional fencing is um, something the board would like to see, we can certainly uh, look into that as well as sliding that staging area further away from uh, the bulk tank. Um, so it sounds like, you know, just some distance um, uh, calculations and revisions um, might be something we need to take a look at, and we're certainly open to that. So why do you the red? The loading rack, it used to be out in front of the tanks. I'm just curious more than anything else. Wayne, why don't you go ahead and take I'm that sorry, one? Sorry, I just, I couldn't hear anybody and uh, just got that fixed. Uh, so I'm sorry I missed the question. Okay, Wayne, why did we move the loading rack over next to the building instead of being out in front of the tanks? Um, well, when we, um, that, that was the design that um, Rabido was looking for when uh, they decided to go underground with all the tanks. So you've got uh, on the west side, the big transport pad, that's where the trucks come in and they'll be unloading fuel on that end of those underground tanks. So unloading fuel happens on one side, the loading 
happens on the side toward the building. So trucks will back in on the loading rack side um, net between the building um, and the underground tanks. So that's just the, uh, the format that um, Rabido requested I draw it up as, and that's you know just a, a standard way of doing that. So there are space and, um, considerations between the rack and the building. Um, I think that uh, Tim was saying, according to NFPA 58, that um, there are separations there that need to be in place that don't go on the print. Um, yeah, as far as uh, if we need to move um, the building or, uh, you know, we have room both to the east and to the west to provide uh, some more separation there. Um, we've got 20 feet from the building to the uh, edge of the tanks where the loading rack is. Um, and we can, we can shove the building to the east. We have some room that way uh, to accommodate what you know whatever that minimum separation is is going to be so question so what is the distance that the board is looking for based on your consultant's recommendation Jim, did you have a, a uh, distance there i, I well, think there's, well there's there's two items the first one <clears throat> is just the distance from the offloading in your in your case, not the offloading on the left side, but the actual uh, the pad, the 27 foot wide pad. There's two items. One is a 20, and this is directly out of NFPA 30 and directly out of the fire code of New York State. It talks about a 25 foot distance between the valves or the cases where the vehicle or the truck or the offloading is occurring from that to a building, so that's 25 feet. There are provisions that allows reductions of those areas by use of large fire rated walls and or fire protection systems. So that's item number one. Number two, there's a separate fire code in New York requirement about the canopy structure being separated by 15 feet to a building and it basically involves in that south elevation that you're having and if you you essentially slid your whole garage to the east you know another 15 feet or something like that 15 25 feet whatever those numbers are it probably would meet what you're having what you're having to do based upon codes and the other reason we're bringing this up this is not a code review it's it's just it affects the special relationships, what's going on on the site plan. Tim, from what you see on the site plan, is it feasible for them to also move the canopy, the tanks, and the uh, transport pad to the west? I would have to defer to the applicant's grading and everything else that's there. Um, I'm not that familiar on the, on the west side I suppose that's another option, but I would leave that up to them based on grading. It's probably going to be more of an important grading issue than, uh, than, than everything else. And they've got a transport pad. So is it possible? I suppose it is. I'll leave it up to them to answer that. So it sounds we, like we have at least, I was going to say, we, we have at least 25 feet from the edge of the transport pad to the uh, edge of the stormwater basin to work with off to the west. So we have some room there. So it sounds like if you, if you added an additional 15 feet between the loading rack, the, the, the east side of the loading rack and the west side of the garage, it would satisfy both of those concerns. The loading rack can. can't be yet. You added 15 feet in between the loading rack and the garage. Whether you added 10 one way and five the other, just an additional 15 would give you enough space between the canopy concern and the valve concern. 
that correct? Yeah, we can definitely look at this and see what we can slide uh, either direction to make that 15 foot distance um, request. Yeah, it also so I, sounds like your west wall of the garage could potentially be upgraded as well. Perhaps. So, yeah. yeah, maybe if I could clarify, Mr. Chairman, the uh, the code talks about from the the tank or the vehicle valves. Let's just say, for argument's sake, it's it's a belly underside middle portion of of a tractor trailer truck or a delivery truck that's a little smaller. From that point over to and going east towards the building, there's a requirement to be 25 feet away. There's a separate requirement that has the roof structure of the canopy to be 15 feet away. So 15 feet may or may not work based upon the width. I think if that's the center line 27 feet my math says that's like uh, 13 and a half feet. You take half of that, that's six something plus 15. So it might have to be more than 15 feet. And that would be up to them to go through and deal with. But I think there's an opportunity here to, to move things rather than trying to, you know, deal with some of the other pieces here. Yeah, we can certainly look at modifying and sliding. I'm assuming what we're referencing is for USTs, underground storage tanks, not above ground. <clears throat> um, and we'll certainly cross-reference it, and you know we, we, we can find 15 feet. So I guess um, you know to satisfy, we certainly will look at what we can minimize and, and slide one direction or the other to meet that requirement between the canopy and the uh, proposed garage building. Well, as Tim was to say, the, the real requirement here is between those valves and on the transport vehicle has have to be 25 feet away from the the building. So the canopy has a minimum of 15, but the real uh, criteria here is those valves 25 feet from the building. So, but I think you have plenty of space to find them. And that'll be an easy one to fix. So what would you gentlemen propose for the barrier around the small propane tank storage area? Would you just go for additional chain link fence? We could look at chain link fence or um, also look at sliding that, you know, a further distance. So I guess I'll ask the same question as it relates to the smaller tank staging area. What is the distance requirement the board would like to see based on the consultant's feedback? Whatever meets the, uh, the code. Yep, and I don't think the code is overly stringent in this point. It's maybe like I think Tim was saying, 15 feet. So probably the distance you're talking about here is is plenty sufficient. But a barrier there to make sure that if there was a problem with one of the small tanks that didn't end up underneath the uh, the large propane tank is the item in question. Um, my question is, what do you, what is the disposition of those small tanks. It seems like we have a lot of them out there at the present time and someone has neatened them up, but they still are rather unsightly. Do we have, uh, are those tanks that didn't pass inspection and need to be disposed of properly some way or, or uh, what, why are they building up there? Yeah. So it's all, you know, based on the business, you know, interchanging based on customer needs, you know, we certainly, took the board's feedback at some of the earlier meetings to go tidy that up and get, you know, more organized. Um, if fencing, you know, is a, is a, a point that we would like to see to keep it um, organized and uh, contained, we can certainly do that um, and take a look at chain link fencing. So if I heard correctly, so the distance is not necessarily the concern. It's just some sort of barrier if there were an incident to keep those smaller tanks from interfering with the larger tank and a chain link fence would, would alleviate that concern. Did yeah. I state that correctly, Tim? Yes, if I may. So I would refer to the Fire Code of New York, NFPA 58 as requirements. And as long as it's some kind of a barrier that's going to withstand some kind of a significant hit, I'm not talking a plastic kind of fencing or something or a 
sometimes you can get fence posts that are uh, barely paper thin that really doesn't have much of any kind of a support to it, but really significant chain link fencing we have seen successfully used. I'm not saying that is it, but that would be an option. That would be up to the structural and other folks to tell you what that has to be. I apologize. So, so the, the, uh, the question that I asked before is still um, there. What, what is the disposition of those small storage tanks, those small barbecue tanks or 20 pounders or 30 pounders? Do they just stack up there when you collect them? Does somebody come and pick them up or do you recycle them somehow, the ones that are rusty or out of date that can't be refilled, I assume, is what you're collecting up there. Is that true? Not necessarily. Some of them are uh, newer and for new installs. Um, you know, at the same time, older ones that need to be changed out or upgraded for various reasons. I guess it's a, a loaded question that requires a loaded answer. It's, it serves, you know, many purposes. Um, as far as tank condition and statuses and usefulness, you know, within the business model. Yeah, I'm not trying to load the question. I'm just really curious as to um, how you get rid of the tanks that are no longer legal. I know, I only know about this because I just had to buy some of the home because I put them in to have them filled and they were, were no longer good. And I assume that's what you're collecting out there in some ways. Some of those tanks, you switch them out, switch a bad one out for a good one when a customer like me stops by and has a tank that's out of date. Is it, am I off base here or is that correct? No, definitely not off base. You know, I can, that's more of an operations question as far as what the uh, process and procedure looks like to retire some of these tanks that are, you know, not up to certain standards. Um, I'm sure there's a whole recycling um, procedure that takes place, you know, to properly do that um, within guidelines. I don't know what that is offhand, unfortunately, but um, I, I, was curious. I was just curious. I wasn't, uh, wasn't trying to catch anything. <laughs> no problem. Sorry, I can't provide a better answer. Anybody else have any questions? I think we're coming down to the end of this. There was a, I saw a question. Are you a drain, trench drain detail? Yeah, so is there a question regarding the drains in the loading rack and the transport pad area? Yeah, I just want to make sure that when you submit final submittals that the um, the town is going to be happy with the details that you provide for the drains. So um, on the drawing, the drains are uh, go to an underground oil water separator and then they go to a catch basin and then into the four bay. Um, that's all part of um, what eventually when an SPCC plan is prepared, um, that's to, to uh, accommodate um, one of the tank or one of the, if one of the tanks a, in one of the transports or delivery vehicles were to uh, rupture, then those um, catch basins would collect any material and then run it through the oil water separator um, and either catch it in the oil water separator or anything that goes through even on a routine basis, storm water or whatever just flows through the oil water separator on into the stormwater uh, pond. So that you, there's a requirement to contain um, something like 110% of uh, a tank rupture. Um, you know, most of the time you're dealing with tanks that could be, you know, 4,500 gallons or something like that. So between the catch basins, the, the oil water separator and the four bay will have far more than 4,500 gallons of um, 
volume to contain any kind of tank rupture. So that's what those two catch basins are all about. So yeah, my question really wasn't about the engineering, their adequacy, it's just a matter of making sure that you provide whatever drawings for the details on the um, that drainage and the separator, all those kinds of details that uh, the town requires. I, I don't know if there are any specific details. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm a little confused. Well, I mean, I see a lot of water service connection details on S3. And a lot of those seem potentially a little superfluous maybe, but um, but I don't see any details on any of the, um, the drainage or the, the separator. And I'm not sure if that comes into play at the time of uh, building permit or whether we need those kind of beforehand. Probably we don't need those as part of the site plan. But I'm sure that will be required at the term meeting. Totally. So, yeah, I guess that answers my question, Wayne. I don't necessarily think we need those now on a sheet, but seeing all the uh, water line details kind of made me think about that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a legitimate, legitimate question because um, these are some of this will be used for construction uh, drawings. So, um, you know, your, your, your question is legitimate. Any other questions? So I had, uh, I had some other questions. Um, I was given a list of uh, items that, um, I was supposed to, well, we were supposed to provide some information on. I'm a little confused about some of it. Maybe somebody can tell me what the, you know, what, what it is we're looking for. The, uh, the list I'm assuming was distributed to the members, um, but, you know, a couple of them in, uh, indicate like an updated SWIP and um, multi-sector general permit package. I'm I'm not sure what, is that just uh, an item that, I mean, are we supposed to provide that or, I mean, because everything is, has been submitted and addressed before. So um, is that something that, I mean, what, what different are we looking for there? Yes, I can uh, chime in on this. Um, I believe that was a comment from the town engineers uh, relative to the grading changes on the plan. Assuming that would be an updated SWIP and that would be submitted with the multi sector general permit package. We were just looking for that complete package as well. Um, do you want me to talk to the town engineer about it? I mean, uh, yeah. the, the change. Thing. Grading are extremely minor and almost negligible and de minimis to, and, and they don't really change what's being proposed. Um, and everything continues to drain the same way it, it has before. Um, you know, it's, it all ends up in the stormwater pond, either be a catch basin or just overland flow. I mean, if there's, something there I, I mean there's really as far as the proposed use there's nothing to, to really change um, but I can I can see if they if they need something I mean I can talk to to Dondi about that if, if that's what you're looking for yes that's fair. Okay. Um, and, and what about the demonstrating compliance with the SPCC regs um, a lot of that is predicated on uh, an approval of the project that uh, usually an SPCC is not prepared until there's uh, either construction or imminent construction or we, we all know what's going in and then we can have a plan and that's an EPA requirement um, and it doesn't 
doesn't really get submitted to to anybody. That's something that's prepared for the in the event of a spill, and it's kept on site by, in this case, Morabito, and probably would be kept in their office building. It's something that's required to be prepared in case EPA comes onto the site. So at this point, it's not normally done, especially without having been approved at this point. We, we don't have an approval to, to prepare something like that. What was the thought there? Yeah, the request was from town council for review. Um, but that can also be made a condition of approval as it pleases this board. So I didn't quite catch all that. Oh. Yeah, sorry, it's probably a bit choppy. Um, I believe that was a request from the town council for review. Uh, I think he's on this call. Um, I see him there, but um, uh, in any event, uh, this board could also make that a condition of approval as well as that submission. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely have to prepare one. I mean, Morabito has them for all of their bulk plants. So that's that's something that will be prepared. And, and, you know, upon receiving approval, that that can be prepared. So that, that definitely would be something that we would come up with for the site. I think it would um, probably be helpful and, during and, environmental review. Um, if we could just yeah. add it into the seeker, yeah, I mean, it would help with the part three for us, certainly. Yeah, we, the, we have no plan. problem providing that um, after the fact. As Wayne was alluding to, typically it's done after approvals, then we go out and secure um, that type of documentation. <clears throat> Once we're in receipt of that documentation, we have no problem providing that. Um, if that's part of the conditional you know, approvals, um, you know, walking a little bit further back based on uh, the other comments, um, you know, if, um, uh, you know, the distance requirements, um, you know, between the canopy and the garage, um, the fencing around the staging area for the smaller tanks, you know, those are all things um, we can definitely accommodate if, you know, it's possible at all for the board to make those just part of um, conditions, you know, for preliminary site plan approval. Um, I guess that would be the request and we can certainly accommodate and make sure that we, we meet those um, conditions. Okay, thanks for that. I'll have that by uh, code and fire as well. Just make sure they're um, comfortable with that. Thanks. Um, following along those same lines, um, you know, the, the petroleum bulk storage permit package is something that, you know, will be full, full speed ahead once, um, once we have a, approval and the town has approved the use of the site for petroleum bulk storage. Because this, again, this is in tandem with closing down the Ithaca bulk plant and opening up the bulk plant up here in, in Lansing. So um, that, you know, that's normally done, you know, it's got to be coordinated with DEC and has to be completed before, you know, they can even bring a product on site. So, but that, that's not usually done like right now. Are these are all questions brought up again. Uh, yes, these are all questions of, of proposed. Yes, at project review committee, these are just verbatim potential requests. So, if you can get a hold of Dandy, um, the town engineer, um, to uh, he'll be able to better answer some of these concerns. I mean, I can talk to him about the the, the stormwater uh, situation, but again, it's a de minimis issue. The the overall uh, plan was already submitted and approved five years ago, um, and the the change in grade is insignificant out here. Um, no, you know, no significant increase in impervious area or anything like that. So, um, you know, I can. To me, it, it seems like it could be a, 
a condition, another condition of approval or preliminary approval to, uh, you know, say we'll get that part taken care of. Well, we can erase it right off the conditions list if you have a conversation with Dandy and he says, and he, you explain it like you did tonight, I think that there won't be a problem. We won't have to write it down as a condition. Um, these, these questions all came, as uh, CJ said, from the the uh, project review committee that included the town um, uh, attorney and the town engineer and plan. Mm -hmm. And so um, if these were concerns brought up by the town engineer, if you just get a hold of him and explain it to him, <coughs> he'll rescind his comment, <clears throat> I'm sure. Right. And uh, just to follow up. Uh, yeah, so if we could get Go ahead, CJ. Sorry to interrupt. Um, they'll be meeting again on uh, Thursday, July 8th in the morning as well. Um, town engineers out this week. Uh, so we'll be meeting them again. So if there's anything you'd like to submit in the interim, um, I'll be sure to confirm uh, these comments with them and see if there's any amendments they'd like to make um, to these um, suggested submittals. Right. Once we get clarification from the engineer's office and the town attorney is, has uh, signed up on his comments here, I think that those changes in the uh, in the uh, design could be dealt with how oh, can we deal with that in the resolution or do we would we like to see a print we'd probably rather see it on the paper uh yeah i assume applicants would provide them the, the uh, round of the site so if you can supply us with site plan changes that shows the separations and the fence around the uh the thing i think that we're in position to uh, move forward here yeah, the, the requests uh, that come out of tonight's meeting are, you know, pretty minimal and can be dealt with very, very quickly. So I'll make sure they're all ready for that meeting on July 8th um, so we can, you know, cover, you know, sort of close up uh, the com the comments that, that have been brought up tonight so everybody can be um, happy with those. So, yeah, I don't, I don't see any problem with that. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, I have one other additional question. Um, uh -huh. seems that new information has come up that they're proposing to literally shift the loading areas and such away from the proposed garage building. While it's not necessarily a code requirement, it would be an awfully good idea to have the west wall of that garage being non-combustible. I have no idea what kind of building that you're placing there, if it's a pole barn with wood walls. But if there is an incident in that loading rack area uh, with a wood wall, that would definitely provide fire extension into that garage. So just a suggestion, not a code provision that I'm aware of, um, to make that exterior west wall non-combustible. And so I would add to that um, soffit and fascia as well. I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. I would add to that soffit and fascia as well. Sorry. Especially those areas too, correct. So you can take that under consideration. But thank you very much, gentlemen. We appreciate your input and hopefully we'll get this when we be put into a public hearing. Well, we've already had two public hearings, but we, as the board sees fit, we will certainly have another one as desired. Do we need to go through it, do you think? Or well, there are fairly substantive changes from the original proposal, I so I think it's reasonable the board desires. The next meeting. Okay. This way, the public will get a chance. 
this way the public we're going to have a public hearing um at the next meeting and the public will get a chance to see what you've done with putting the tanks underground how you've ameliorated almost every single one of their uh, concerns and i think that'll go a long ways towards making uh, making everything go smoothly just a procedural question um if if there is a public hearing next time and it's open and closed in the same meeting uh is there can you vote uh up or down on the project at that point is there that opportunity of these comments if it the answer would be yes if all the con concerns in these lists and the comments are taken care of it as long as guy and dandy don't have any problems with with what's going on and and cj has the time to write up the resolutions before the meeting and gets all the information when she still has time to sign up to write the resolutions then we certainly can vote on a resolution at the next meeting if there's no public input um has there been um comment received from the county at this point or has the project been officially submitted to the county for their comment? Yes, we received 239 review uh, about a week or so ago, and they had no additional comments. All right. And that will be included in the board's next package. Okay, great. Sound good? I'm good. Thank you very much, Wayne. Thank you. And uh, Britt? Thank you. One thing about Zoom is you can see everybody's name. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay, the late thing. Uh, we have uh, two call members. Oh, okay. Mr. Chairman. Wait a second. Oh, on the lake thing? Yeah. yeah, on agenda item number nine, I'm going to be refusing myself per the letter that I sent to you. Thank you very much. And has the, the uh, app been resubmitted? Uh, yes. Yes, it was scheduled anyway. But um, yes, it was resubmitted. And uh, we do have two members of the public that can speak on the topic. Okay, let's hear from them. Okay. Yes, it was discussed anyway. But um, yes, it was resubmitted and Oh, we do have two members of the public that can speak on the topic. Okay, up here. Okay. Hey, you'll need to turn off YouTube. Okay. Could you state your name for the people who might get up here? Yes, uh, my name is Drew Minson. And um, uh, I, uh, I have submitted a, uh, a detailed letter uh, about this uh, proposed building. Um, I live at 290 Bill George Road, which is next door to the north of 281. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, so, first of all, I'd like to say I I'm, I'm strongly object to the proposal that's being made for this uh, living space on the beach. Um, I just want to say to be clear that what, what is a pro uh, proposed is a living space on the beach below the railroad tracks, and it's directly adjacent to my year-round house. In the applications and submittals, um, it's proposed, it's described as a lake shed, a storage shed, an accessory building, but, but what is shown in the um, drawings that have been submitted by Sunnybrook Builders is 120 square foot habitable space. Um, it raised on piers, super insulated with energy efficient windows, interior and exterior lighting, and it's like no storage shed I've ever seen. Um, 
and it, it, it bears little resemblance to the existing 64 square foot uninsulated shed that's next to my house um, that it's supposedly replacing. It's almost twice the square footage. And so to be clear, it, it's what's being proposed is a little lakefront living space that could be used as a living room, a bedroom, a guest house, an Airbnb, or, or a tiny house. So I'm, I'm concerned about this being built right next to me. And I think it's a little disingenuous that it's called a storage shed. But anyway, um, even if it was uninsulated, I, it could eventually be converted into a, a living space. And I have experience with that. On the north side of me, a, a boathouse um, has illegally been converted into a living space. Um, this is all in my letter that I've got. I've got photographs of that. It's, it's, um, uh, it's listed on realtor.com as a lakeside living space, but it was, it, it's not legal. Um, and um, so I'm afraid that, you know, these little structures that are built on the lake somehow have a way of turning into illegal dwelling units. Um, so that's one of my concerns. Um, and, you know, with the increase in the density and, uh, and the decrease in privacy, uh, it has me worried. Uh, the second point I'd like to make um, is that the site for this proposed structure is a steep uh, bank below the railroad tracks. And it's already had substantial erosion there. Um, the owners removed all the trees uh, when, they, when they built their house, which is a three-story house up on above the road. Um, but they removed all the trees on this bank uh, so they could have better views of the lake. So a couple of years ago, there was a mudslide, the dirt and a tree went into the lake. Um, and they just last month removed another tree uh, in preparation for building this little cabin. So I'm concerned about that. Um, I've got photographs of that in my letter as well. Um, and then the third thing I'd like to say is that um, th this living space on the beach will increase the density, noise, artificial light, and remove natural buffers that exist between properties. Um, I know that the property on the other side, on the south of, of the proposed building, they object as well. Uh, and I think they've sent a letter to um, so, you know, it's a natural area. There's a family of mink that live underneath the, the current dock over there. There's a beaver that swims by here once a week. There's, you know, migrating ducks and then the year round ducks that are, that are down here. Um, so I value this natural environment and another dwelling down on the beach will disrupt that as well as, um, you know, the privacy of the neighbors. So, um, my house is down here on the beach. It was built uh, 24 years ago to replace a, a house in the same footprint that was built in 1950. So um, I'm really the only one down on, this, on the beach, but this property has been in the family uh, for 80 years. Uh, my son will be the fifth or sixth generation of the Swayze family to occupy this property down here. And um, so I'm really concerned about protecting it, protecting the natural environment and not allowing the, in, the density to increase uh, with what could potentially become an illegal dwelling unit uh, or living space. Um, so uh, that's pretty much what I had to say. There, there are more details in the letter. Um, and um, I know it's a difficult job for the, you guys on the planning board to regulate these properties on the lake and I don't envy your job, um, but please consider that this increase in the density has a detrimental effect on the natural environment, the lake, the neighborhood, and privacy. Uh, appreciate you letting me talk. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone on the board have questions for him? Mr. Minson? Can you tell us about the flood in 2003 that destroyed the Eastern House? About the what? I'm sorry. In 2003? Is that when you had the new building? I'm sorry, I still I didn't hear that. Your existing house. 
Tell us about the flood that destroyed the pre existing house. Oh, yeah, in 1993, uh, I think it was when the lake uh, reached its highest level ever recorded, anyway. And um, the uh, flood, it flooded the house that, that was existing here. And so um, the, uh, the house that's here now was rebuilt uh, in the same footprint of that house 24 years ago. But higher. Higher, we're, I'm, I'm up on piers. <laughs> yeah. So the water is very much what I remember. Oh, I do. So did that flood take out your foundation? Yeah, the well, the existing house was was right on the on the beach, um, so it you know it it made the house unlivable. So um, my, it was my father in law and mother in law lived here at the time. I used to come and visit. I've been I've been visiting the property for thirty years, um, and uh, I just recently purchased it uh, two and a half years ago from my mother in law and father in law. Uh, to keep it in the family. So, um, but, you know, what I'm concerned about is uh, the folks next door, they have this house on the hill, but they, they're, they're, they're proposing to build a living space down on the beach next to me. Um, and, you know, I've given you guys my objections to that. Okay, thank you very much. We thank appreciate you. it. Take, we have your letter, so we'll be going through that, I'm sure, a little bit here. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Your letter, so we'll be going through that sure a little bit. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, who's it? Uh, this is the Deborah and Barry Zeering. Deborah and Barry Zeering. You have the floor. You have the Thank you. Um, So we own the property at 295 Bill George, which is the adjacent property to the south of the uh, 281 Bill George Road. Can you just turn that up? Um, and we really are in concert with the reasons that Drew stated to oppose this building that's been proposed. There's currently a small storage shed there which is um, appears perfectly functional and is at the base of the stairs. The proposed building is to be put on stilts and to be in the slope of the hillside. The property owners have cleared large amounts of trees from that hillside. There's a picture that Drew submitted with significant erosion that occurred as a result of that, including a tree that came down and was deposited in the lake between two of those properties, ours and the 281 Bill George, because of that erosion that occurred. They're now proposing to build on that same hillside and have cleared additional trees. That puts our property at risk because our stairs going down to our lakefront area share that hillside. And as you can see in the photo, it's significantly eroded even before any further building or clearing is done. That's our biggest concern. The second concern though does have to do with the dwelling that's being proposed as a storage shed because the insulation and the windows really indicate that this is not going to be a storage shed. And our concern is that um, it will be rented out or used as a guest house as an independent use down there. And that will really compromise our privacy as well as Drew's for that lakefront area. And those are really our two concerns. Um, as he stated, their house is way up on a hill. It's three stories high. Um, 
it's a non-conforming lot. There's been variances already made for that. And I know they need an additional variance to build uh, this little house on the beach. So I'm happy to answer any questions, but those are really our concerns. Yeah. Uh, I was under the impression that uh, when the erosion occurred, it also washed out ballast from the railroad tracks and the tracks had to be repaired. Is that true? That is true, yes. Looking, looking at the sketch, it appears that part of the shed is actually going to be located on railroad property. Is that correct? I believe that is also true, but um, I, I suppose the Sunnybrook would be able to attest to that. Are you on it, Sue? I'm sorry. Well, let us finish with her first and then we'll get to you. Yep. Any more questions for the assistant? Are you asking a question about ownership? Do you want to hear from town council? Well, uh, uh, we're looking at the sketch. Well, I think we can ask the question first to the owner sure. and, and then to council. Thank you very much. I think that uh, you can listen in now. Thank you for your remarks. Thank you for your consideration. We appreciate it. So we want to, we'll hear from the owners now. Would you like to make a presentation? Now that we're trying all the Edward side. Okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is Mabel Lewis. I'm a representative of Sunny Brook Builders. I'm the administrator of the CAT Specialist Property Company. I'm really going to have trouble. I'm very playing uh, So, this uh, is a proposal for an accessory building to replace an existing accessory building. Uh, the current accessory building uh, is down. Uh, on the beachfront, it fits within, it, it currently exists within the side setback as well as the 30 foot front setback. Um, as we've seen, uh, many of the properties along the lake fit within that 30 uh, foot front setback. Our intention is to remove the uh, existing building that, fit, that is currently within the side setback to move that into a position where it is no longer in non-compliance with that side setback. The existing building is down on a flat, close to the high water level mark. Um, the uh, flood that was mentioned would, in that case, have taken up that building. By moving, uh, by removing that building and creating a different accessory building uh, that is on piers, and it is at the level of the existing landing. We will uh, uh, remove that concern of that building being struck by any future uh, floods, which would then potentially uh, cause uh, you know, pollution in the lake. By building the structure up on the uh, stilts or moving it up out of that space, we have moved it away from uh, the high water mark. So we have we have discussed that uh, with the DDC. They explained their uh, requirements that that's not fit uh, anywhere below or directly above any of that space for the high water mark. We have moved it uh, to the shore side so it is uh, not within that space. Um, Let me ask a quick question. Please. The shed that the existing shed. I think I missed some. I'm old, so sometimes things go in this year. Now this one goes stop in the middle. Did you say you're going to move it? The we're going to remove it. Remove. Remove it. So it's going to be demolished. 
is being replaced with a with the new uh, accessory truck. It's going to be demolished. Yes. Okay. And this shed, the new one, is it going? So there's a property line problem here. It looks like. Is that true? Separate. Uh, if the uh, building site is within the 30 foot front setback, you did mention uh, something about the railway property. Right. The site plan for uh, the uh, existing survey map. Uh, that is on file with the county for this property did not indicate the boundaries of the um, railroad. That is certainly information that we can uh, add. We're going to need a survey map of where the boundary is. And the location, the proposed location. Uh, it will require. Uh, some digging on my part to find out that information, since as I said, it was not contained in the official survey that's uh, on file. So I will look into further information. I think it's possible we also to see in plan view the relationship proposed structure to the uh, mean high water line and the mean low water line. In other words, you, you, have, you have the indication here. But we, we want to see the plan, the horizontal distance between the structure and the mean high water and mean low water lines. Is this going to require a, uh, a, a, a area variance? Is that right? It's going to require a variance because it fits within the 30 foot front setback from the lake. So, isn't this something that should go to the zoning board of appeals first? Um, yep, that's scheduled. We'd also like, uh, as you mentioned, we and the board of zoning appeals are going to need to know the exact location of the railroad property line with relationship to the east side of the structure. And what's the total acreage of this plot? On the waterfront or the plot? The one for your building on the waterfront. Um, I'm afraid that I haven't uh, divided that out. Okay, uh, the total acreage of the property. 0.22 acres. So the entire property is 0.22, 22 acres, acres, including the house. That's why the house right, is not conforming. That's why it's not conforming. Well, the house is not conforming. The uh, shed up on top is in the, also in the uh, side setback. The stairs, I assume, are permanent structures in the setback. So this is getting close to your neighbors in a way that we're trying, trying to set things up so that they don't. The uh, new shed will, in fact, solve that problem by moving the existing shed is within the side setback. The new structure will not be within the side setback. It will be further away from the neighbor's side. Yeah. I should have thought that was a good thing that we were doing for the units and we moved it to the other side of the stair. Also, I would like to say that I'm really surprised to hear. Did you please speak up? Yes. I was surprised to see Drew's complaint, which we just saw you know, as we walked through here today. We offered to work with him. He's an architect. We wanted to hire him to design plans with us. We could work together on something that would be amenable. Um, I understand his concerns about the property to the north. It is a, you know, a, a living structure. The property to the south is the second group of neighbors that you heard, they have a structure very similar to what we're proposing. Slightly larger. Slightly larger, and it has not been converted into a living space. It's really not our intention. I don't, I don't know how to prove that to you other than I hope you promise it. You know, you can come back and inspect clearly and see that that's not true. Can you, can, you, can you describe the interior finishing just real quickly? So it's drywall, insulated drywall, 
carpeting? Not right. carpeting. No, no. carpeting. We have a shed that's falling apart and yeah. absolutely tested. So, what was, so the flooring is just going to be plywood decking? Or, plywood. So the interior of this is just going to be plywood decking. Yep. It is going to be insulated. Yeah. Drywall on the interior. Yeah. And yeah. ceiling. One more of the six. Finish the thing. Take absorb moisture. Yes. And the ceiling will be drywall as well. Or the other interior. But it's one just one big large room and no love, no bath facilities at yeah. all. Yeah. It had it will have electricity to it, it's running water to it. Yeah. The facility the, the building will be insulated. It does have windows that provide um, you know a, a little bit of respite from the uh, direct sun and it does have uh, you know flashing. This is all intended to keep the space dry. It's uh, in my understanding is that it's a combination of storage, a place to change before bathing. There are no restroom facilities nearby, nor within easy reach. There are no plumbing facilities that are being brought to this. Uh, the light that will exist, of course, the uh, lighting, I, as I understand it, is required in that space on the exterior. And uh, there will be light on the side, there will be electricity available as exists in the current uh, building. It's also, it, it is an obviously bigger building than your building than you have on the beach now, correct? So it's not really a, just a replacement, it's a replacement almost double size. No, the existing, the existing structure is 10 foot by 86, 10 foot four by 86. The new structure is 10 foot by 12 foot. If you measure the roof lines, they get the structure size. It's, it's not the same. Yeah. Yeah. But the building itself, wall to wall, or they eight feet by eight? Is that what you It's a little about? over eight by eight. It sounds like eight and a half. This one is the eight. wall to wall measurement of this building, eight. not roof to roof. The wall to wall building on this, on this replacement is 10 by 12. So, so apples to apples were 10 by 12 to pretty close to 8 by 8. 9 by 9. Uh, 8 by 9. 8 by 4. It's approximately 8 and a half by 10 and a half existing. It will be 10 by 10. But that was the roof, it's 8 and a half by 10 and a half existing. So, it's eight, the, the thing is, so there's a slight overhang on the margin, it's a larger overhang on the other one, and overall it's eight and a quarter by about nine and a half. For the building it's itself. The building wall exists. Wall. Yeah. The building that exists is eight and a half. You said that the uh, shed that exists has electricity? Yes. Where does that come from? Um, and don't say a wire. The conduit was put in long before we were on this. Under the road? Yes. Under the railroad tracks? Do they ever dig it up for you? Do the does the railroad ever dig up your wire? No. And there's been a, a line down serving the pump in the lake. Back in my days as an electrician, there were many times when they'd go through and do some refurbishing of the track and I'd get hired to get down and put the lines back in that <laughs> were going on because they cut them. Do you have a lease with the railroad? What do you have? We saw the lease and we found that we would get a uh, uh, 90 day a 30 day lease. And I, I'm sorry, you have a 30 day lease? No, no, no. We do not. We tried, we talked with the railroad to try to get a lease, but they would only give us a 30 day lease. Okay. And our attorney advised us not to sign a lease that was 30 days. And, and so, the neighbor to the north who's on the other side of the railroad, how does you know his relationship with the railroad? You must have a 99 year lease. We do not know if you're under the impression that that was a historic property that had been used and was basically an excellent chance. Do you have a lease to cross the tracks? We do not have a lease to cross the tracks. We tried to get uh, the various things that we have done. So, well, addressing neighbors, have they been locked? Some, some of them have leases, some of them do. And some don't. Yeah. And some own, but not. Do you own the land on the on the uh, lake side of the track? You do not own the land. You do not own it. So it's all railroad property. 
it's all old land. So we have use of it. We're taxing the land. So you're not taxed on that. You are taxing the land. Okay, what is the percent coverage of a lot current home? Percent of the land is close. What? I think, uh, I mean, it's close to the threshold. I think it's like 20 ish percent, about 20 something percent. Okay. So if you include acre. with the caveat that that includes the acreage, I believe, to the west of the railroad. Which is the railroad? No. no. I, yes. They have a right oh, yeah. to use. I, I would be interested in seeing the survey map because there's many areas where you want the railroad has a 66 foot wide strip and any land between the lakefront and the west line of the railroad is owned by properties to the east to the railroad. So I do believe you own a strip of land between that 33 feet center line. Check it out. Neither do the parties to the south of us, because they don't own the land that they have uh, constructed on, and we do not know the tenants and owns the land that gets us from. Sure. Yeah. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had a similar uh, project, storage shed along the lake, and uh, one of the things that we had to do. Concern ourselves with was whether or not it was on land that actually belonged to people and if it was clear of the railroad land. So we have to be careful. We have to judge both projects by the same criteria. This is the more permanent structure. Are you going down? You're, you're not showing any elevation as to how deep the footers are going. I assume they're going under cross line. Stone. Yes, the going down, going down to the bedrock or the cross plan as required. Yep. Okay. There, that was one measurement, and this didn't show up as a place. There, there does seem to be a serious erosion problem. I was wondering how you were going to address that. The, the erosion, we had one drying and then later, and then we had uh, one chop uh, knocked off, cut down, cut down, threw back, and eventually was a small bit of uh, The erosion was caused in an incident that undermined the tracks. Let me just go through the incident that undermined the tracks. It uh, took out four feet of, uh, or three or four feet of stuff under the track just to the north of Mason's house. When that flow happened, it, it took that out eventually. The first flow was over the track and wiped it off the car, wiped out the side of it, that it drove what, what was remaining of these scattered. So it was all that one incident because of the culvert got flow north of Minson Town. Now he took the railroad to task and they finished it and they put in the culverts there. But the erosion that you see is from a, a catastrophic event that happened in the major part of the Kind of looked like fresh dirt. It's been that way for several years. But eroded. Yeah, in real time. Right. It does seem like a pretty unstable hillside. Yeah. Seems like something grown from grass seed that might be a big help. Um, it's it needs more than grass seed. <laughs> I mean, this was a problem. And it was a problem. That you helped to maintain it by taking down a dead tree. We took down a dead and we took down a lot of trees for the death. We cut off two, and we cut off, and there were some smaller trees growing up the street today. And we tried to cut them off so they didn't damage boats or whatever when the water flowed and make it safe. Was this during that bad storm we had a few years ago? In August. It's a, yeah, it's a, we have easements in both meters. We have this has been a contentious relationship from day one. There's a sidewalk easement on uh, 10 feet wide to allow the neighbors to the south of us to access the broken and the great campus because they're probably not safe. Uh, 
that's um, we put in permanent stone steps and failing steps that they we share, I think we share responsibility. But we put in stone steps to make it an improvement on all the easement area. We signed, we got to pay $2,000 for an easement with the, the in laws of the Minson and $100 a year to maintain our access to driveway access to have legitimate parking space and walk the road. Because the parking space that go along the road are arguably within the high court of the road. So we have tried in every possible way to accommodate the neighbors. And it's a little, we understand what the concern is, the concern of the erosion and stuff. We have no storage. We put the house within limits that were given to us to fit the original 720 square foot imprint, uh, footprint of the house that existed there before. It was under the electrical wires and across three property lines. We demolished that structure and put something in the And so we are trying to play with the rules. We also do use some more storage space and a possible space for some new workshop that we can sit at the computer and look at. You know, we're not looking for a uh, place to, to, to rent. This is the primary, this is our, our house in Lansing. Um, so yeah, the big question saying, is that when you decide to sell this place mm -hmm. or somebody else comes in, we don't want it to look like a place for Airbnb to move right. in. Yes. And, and Especially with no sewage, which and seems property, to happen around the lake for some reason. And the property to the north of Zeus was a flagrant violation of Airbnb. Yep. And you know, we have no intention of losing. So you're looking for storage that's a garment food. It's farmer proof, proof uh, or sexy proof. Um, and when we can sit, and the windows are set so that they freeze and play at the bottom of the room and the back. So that's we demolished a 16 by 16 foot structure that was over the existing set of foot that put in the first year of buying the property. The structure was, was derelict and falling apart. We put in the step in the plan. But we did not rebuild any structure within the year. <coughs> so this is much smaller than the 16 by 16 structure, but it's bigger than the than the new structure. So plus an apartment or this property that is. Did guy have any comments? You know. Wrong computer. <laughs> Are you going to get a tech person to help us? This is the tech person. <laughs> I'm looking at her. Um, yeah, I believe council is here uh, and can speak to this matter. Hey, guys. I, I, I tried to give you the pleasure of not staring at me until you needed to. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there. I, I think that there are probably some issues that you're going to have to tackle. One, one obviously you're aware of is the potential cross referral um, during site plan review for the uh, potential area variance. Whether there's a second uh, area variance that's going to arise relative to lot coverage, or whether there's a, a question regarding the rules for expanding and non-conforming use whether it's a non-conforming lot or a non-conforming use, they both sort of fall into that category. Um, and, and then I think it's really up to the applicant to tackle the title question because I've listened to this discussion and I've had this issue arise on both sides of this lake, uh, on Alaska, on Seneca, and the, the railroad titles and the way they work and how they vary from railroad to railroad based upon whatever statute in the 1800s usually that invested the railroad with authority to obtain title by condemnation or otherwise and how they took the title and exactly what title history is for each individual lot varies considerably. So uh, there are some areas along the lake where the railroad title goes from a defined line to the, to the shoreline of Cayuga Lake. And in some such places, uh, there is additional land uh, outside of where the railroad right away 
would be regularly understood to be if it's 66 feet wide, which was traditionally uh, the amount of land they took or condemned, though in some cases, for instance, the Ithaca Oigo Railroad, they were allowed to condemn up to 100 feet if they wanted to in given locations, i.e. sidings, stops, stations, uh, things like that. So uh, one of the questions that always comes into play if the railroad is taking title to a shoreline is what does that mean? Um, does it mean there was no land there in 1828, but as a result of the natural process of erosion and deposition, there is land there now? And if so, whose title did it append to? Uh, moreover, if the underlying landowner, or more accurately, the, the landowner's um, predecessors in title had rights that went to the lake, uh, did they include by some express recitation in the deed what would have been then called littoral or now it's been merged into one common thing called riparian rights? Who has those and were they taken by the railroad or preserved or is it almost impossible to tell based upon whatever deed existed or condemnation title was taken in 18 whatever it was? So there's many, many places along the shorelines of Cuga Lake in particular, all, all the way up and down in spots ranging from uh, the town of Ithaca and city of Ithaca way down, this has been a title question, way down past the Ithaca sailing. It's arisen in a couple of places here in Lansing. It's come up in Ledyard. It's come up in a number of municipalities to the north. So, um, it's sometimes almost impossible to tell who actually owns the land. And so basically you almost have a situation where I think uh, Al had said, there's almost a legal presumption that says that the upland owner owns the land on the downland side. And that can be buttressed by use and occupancy without objection by those who might also claim to own it. Um, so that's gonna play into the calculations one other thing that probably is deserving of mention is unless they're very old, not many people have any lease or true easement rights over the railroad right away. Railroads don't traditionally give leases or easements, but they do give licenses. And there is a very important distinction, legally speaking, between a lease, an easement, and a license. A lease and an easement create an estate in title. A license does not. So uh, it, it's not up to you as a planning board to decide uh, whether uh, someone can place their infrastructure on a third party's land, nor is it up, because you can't do that, of course, nor is it up to you to determine what the current state of title is, but it's up to the applicant to demonstrate that they have adequate rights for the site plan review. And then you would refer the variant side of this without comment or input to the ZBA for their review. And if they granted the area variance, uh, then, uh, I mean, you would have done the environmental review in order for them to grant the area variance. But let's say that happens, they grant the area variance, then it would come back to you for final site plan review. Um, that's sort of the nuts and bolts of it. I'm not trying to throw monkey wrenches in anything, but what happens to real property along a water body over a period of time whether or not the property boundary actually follows the land as it moves depends in part upon how the title was conveyed. But in most cases, it has to do with whether or not the changing of the land is as a result of a natural process, erosion and deposition, or as a result of an avulsion, a sudden storm event, a man-made creation or something of that nature. There are also some issues here that you, I think you may have to address in terms of uh, the lateral and subjacent support rights that neighboring property owners have that could theoretically be impinged by additional construction or removal of additional uh, ground holding cover, which would include the railroad. If, if they have in fact, if in fact changes have been made to the land and further changes are proposed to the land that might cause uh, parts of the tracks, including uh, you know, their, their structural support, their bed and their, their rock to fall down, then there may, you may need to do something to stabilize that soil. And it, it doesn't matter what the reason is. Um, 
all landowners owe a duty to their neighbors of lateral and, and what's called subjacent support. If I own the lot next to yours, I'm not allowed to dig a trench 50 street feet straight down and let your property fall onto my land. So uh, there are some, some issues there that I think that probably can very be pretty much adequately covered with some, some site plan conditions. And I imagine um, these would be the typical site plan conditions you'd see about preventing soil loss and erosion and improving the, uh, and mitigating the visual appearance that might be deemed negative effects on the neighborhood. If any, maybe there's none and you're not gonna worry about it. But those are my comments in terms of what I've listened to and some of the legal issues that I think you'll tangle with. I think if the applicant demonstrates to your satisfaction that they have the title rights, and it's very possible they do, but I think one of the, the speakers there said, we'll have to do a little digging and, and I would agree. Um, I've done railroad titles back to the early 1800s and they are not easy to parse, but the records do usually exist. Um, so again, I, I'm, I, you know, I represent the town and I'll advise the town on, on what title research or positions may take, but I'm not going to encourage the planning board to take a final position relative to what the state of title is, just like anyone else who submits an application, they have to reasonably demonstrate that they have a right to put that structure on the land, on the land that they propose to use. And if it appears to be theirs and there's no adverse or hostile claims and there haven't been for decades, they're probably okay. But we'll cross that bridge once that information's addressed. Thank you very much, Guy. Yep. Are there any other questions? I mean, do you, or do you wanna just let this process go forward and then maybe tackle some of this stuff um, you know, at, at PRC, or I can look at some title stuff if you want when the time comes, I, I'll leave it to you. But if you have questions right now, um, you can throw them out there or we can defer until more information's in the door. I probably should have mentioned at the outset that this is a sketch plan review, not a site plan review. We're just right. offering our opinion of what they're going to need to get through this and, and whether or not, I think we don't, did I hear you say that we don't want to make any recommendation to the, to the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals? No, you, you, you shouldn't. I mean, it's, it's relatively nuanced, but if you look at both village and town law and even the general city law all read identically. When you cross refer an area variance to the ZBA on a uh, use or uh, area variance, you're, there's no requirement that you provide input and you generally should not because variances deal with allowed uses and rights. But if you compare the language in 277, I believe it's subdivision six or seven relating to cross referrals on subdivision reviews, the ZBA is required to obtain and normally you just submit with your referral a recommendation because what you're doing is getting input on a subdivision and subdivisions are considered privileges, not rights. So you're almost triggering and staying out of the way of the more judicial function of the ZBA on variances by not commenting and not seeking to influence their review. They, they can certainly come to you and ask for information, but the general rule is you're, you shouldn't be providing them anything other than the referral and the applicant should provide the application. In the referral language in, uh, again, subdivision law, it specifically says that the planning board's opinion should be obtained. Obviously, I think the point there is the ZBA shouldn't be considering a variance if the subdivision's not going to be approved. Um, so it's a matter of judicial economy and making sure that, that you're not unduly influencing the ZBA when they are making a determination based on a landowner's rights as opposed to their privileges. Rights are more heavily protected by law. That's all. Go ahead. So is this a use or an area of variance or both? Run that by me again. Some Sometimes the uh, the audio is a little uh, warbly. You were talking about this, maybe a use variance, maybe an area of variance, maybe both. What should the board zoning field be looking at? Uh, 
well, they should be looking at whatever is needed in order to allow a site plan to be reviewed. I mean, we're at sketch plan. Once there is a site plan, I think it will be able, it'll be easier to specifically identify and do the calculations for lot coverage, uh, whether this is or is not an expansion of a non-conforming use. I heard some discussion about the square footage of the, uh, of the, um, of the shed uh, or whatever you wish to characterize it as um, and, and comparing that to the square footage of the proposed new structure, is it significantly different? How much is it shifting? Is that an expansion of the non-conforming use? It may or may not be, but those are initially, uh, they, they could very easily become um, ZBA matters because if there's a question there, normally the zoning officer would make that determination. And if the applicants were unhappy because uh, he said that is an expansion, it has to go to the ZBA, they can appeal that determination. There's any number of ways it could play out, but you first have to figure out exactly what is the footprint of the property and where is the infrastructure finally gonna be cited. And then I think you can do the calculations. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, all I'm saying is I think there's a potential for more than one variance here, but if the applicants are essentially correct, then there's only only really the setback variance if it's within 30 feet of the of the shoreline, because there's a frontage rule that it's presumed that you're fronting on the lake. Um, but again, those are you'd have to get the, the application before you and see where everything is finally cited in order to, to know exactly what those issues are. I think the applicants have been told there may be other issues here other than just one area of variance and they can adjust their plans to, to, to try to get an approval as efficiently as they think they can. But as far as any action by the planning board, uh, if the uh, zoning department decides that an area variance or some kind of variance is required, this must go to the board zoning appeals before the planning board can do anything. Right? Correct. Yeah. That's correct. And, and, and that's where you get into that classic rub when you have a cross referral. Um, so there's two different ways that can happen. Uh, and, and different municipalities do it differently. There was just a Supreme Court case about exactly this. I was counsel for a town in this county on this issue and, and Lansing does it differently. Um, Lansing follows the 1993 or generally follows the 1993 amendments where there was immediate cross referral instead of a technical denial. And then you just go over, you get your variance. Lansing has viewed these types of matters as uh, all one related action, i.e. a site plan review that needs a variance. And so either the ZBA or the planning board is going to be lead agency. This would very likely be um, uh, a, a, an unlisted action would be my guess, unless something unusual is triggered. And um, as an unlisted action, either both boards can do um, uncoordinated reviews or one board would take a coordinated review. In seeker and under land use review, the latter option is the best. So normally the ZBA would, would start its process and traditionally you as the planning board have been the lead agency and you'd look at the environmental um, type issues and you would try to work your timing appropriately so that if a negative declaration were appropriate, it would be issued prior to the ZBA meeting at which they anticipate making a determination on the variance. Because if the variance is granted, they must have a clear negative declaration in order to so issue. So there's that little timing thing, which we have worked before many times successfully. And I think that would really fall to the the two boards and, and really the planning department to make sure that the, the timing is coordinated and that proper comments come in on the EAF 
for a coordinated review. But um, again, I think at the sketch plan phase, we're just identifying these issues so we can understand how it would move forward and who would be doing what portion, who'd be the lead agency, whether or not you're gonna require a public hearing because on a site plan, you're not always mandated to do so, et cetera. Any other questions? Guys, here to me, we have to find out who owns what first. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you don't have authority to. I, I, I can't apply for a building permit on your land, so you couldn't issue my building permit. It's the same reason that when someone comes along and is proposing to buy or build, you look for an agency letter. Yes, this person has authority to do a subdivision application, they're my potential buyer. Um, here, I, I don't think that's really an issue, but the underlying question of who owns the land uh, is, you know, you want to make sure that you're dealing with the landowner when you do a land use review. And so here, I think at least from the sketching, it may or may not be true, but from the sketch, it looks that part of this may be in the railroad right of way. So again, that's a title question. Um, do you have permission to use the railroad land? Um, does that permission already exist, i.e. was it acquired in 2013? Has it been tied to the land all along? As we know, there are some owners of land that have had since the date, the rail for decades and decades, the right to cross and recross the railroad. There was a road crossing that was closed at one time by the railroad and it turned out the landowner actually had the right for it to be there. Um, so uh, there are some other issues hiding in there, but um, you know, from this sketch plan, I think we can agree nobody can definitively say where the infrastructure is in relation to title. So that's just one more sketch plan item that'll need to be cleaned up or clarified. And there's any number of ways the applicant can do that. Everybody, any more questions? For guy? Um, a guy does have a procedural question. So if I'm hearing you correctly, I'm hearing that this may be type uh, unlisted instead of type two action, I assume that it was type two under section 12. Um, and then the follow-up question would be, it sounds like the zoning board of appeals, the, the actual appeal or the variances needed would have to be subject to that determination of ownership to actually figure out lot coverage and all of the dimensional requirements. I think that's what I'm hearing. Well, yeah, I mean, you got a bit of a check and an egg problem and I haven't classified the action. If it turns out that it is in fact a type two action, then there's no coordinated review that's required at all. And as we know, most area variances, but not all are type two actions. Um, so uh, the, the, the area variance, you know, if you were, if you were a nuclear power plant looking for an area variance, I doubt that would be a type two action. So we'll take an extreme example and leave it there. So if, yeah, if, if in fact this is a type two action, and again, I haven't classified it, um, I haven't really looked at it at that level. Um, it, it very well could be if it's an accessory use and it's residential, um, those traditionally do fall into type two classifications unless they trigger some pretty substantial um, square footage issues um, or somewhat less substantial square footage issues if they're in ag districts, but I, I doubt this is. And, and all those pieces would have to come forward. Now, how they would demonstrate uh, their land area calculations or where the bounds of their title run, uh, you know, existing surveys, uh, deed measurements, there's any number of ways that that can be accomplished. Um, but you do have, you know, some demonstrable questions about whether infrastructure is going to be located within the railroad right away or be too close to a, a property line such that an area variance is needed. So if it's a type two action, it makes it much simpler. I just, I don't see it as a type one. It's either gonna be type two or unlisted. By mentioning that, I, I didn't necessarily intend to classify it. No worries, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Jay. Okay, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll still be here listening. Uh, let me know what you need. So I think we've given you some advice on the pitfalls you may fucking do and uh, some of the stuff you're going to need to see. 
I am not sure. It seemed to me Guy was saying that we had to make a decision on something before it could go to plan no. or to uh, no. no, 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 no decision. The staff does that traditionally on, on the action, right? Uh, yeah, so it sounds like we need to get uh, further information on the lot area, that confirmation to be able to actually. And the ownership. Uh, yeah, and uh, what I mean is those two things kind of in tandem uh, to be able to actually determine the extent of non-conformity or, and or lot coverage slash open space requirements, which are the opposite from our code. Um, so yeah, so I'll be working with applicants to essentially make that determination. Question, CJ. Yeah. Um, does that mean that ultimately if there's if there's no other way to do it, the railroad actually has to come forward and say whether or not they own that property. Uh, that would be a question for Guy. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I can tell you that as far as um, mailing goes, as for when we're able to post this for public hearing for consideration at the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, that um, obviously the railroad would be contacted as far as as part of that review. So. Um, yeah. uh, if that answers the question. I do think just throwing it out there that this uh, movement of the hillside could be something, I don't know, part of site plan or whatever, try to stabilize, but I, I don't know where we are on that. But it would I, certainly be a consideration to consider secret. Yeah, for me. <laughs> I agree, of course, that time I mean, is obviously owned by the railroad. And so whether your use allows you to do that or not is the question. Okay, any more questions for them? Do you have any questions of us for site plan? Sure, that our use would require us to fix the hillside, but not because we are willing to build on it. I don't think we get to play both sides of the coin, so it would probably be one or the other one. And the hillside separately from the road, you can separate all those nuts. And this is relatively the state of soil. It looks fresh. It's not fresh for some years. Um, there's a very minimal line. I come from the bottom of the They can cut roads over the line of years in the soil. What? Pardon? I think it could stand some vegetation. I think Tom I, I, understands more than I do. And I would agree with that in terms of the red was a railroad problem. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate your consideration. Dean, you can move back into your normal seat. You can miss the two we want to bring George back up again. Um, I do not see George in the waiting room. Um, we can certainly wait for his slight delay uh, between the YouTube and the stage. <laughs> we could move on to the shoulder. We certainly could. Yeah, that's here. Let's try to get out of here. You okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We don't have a. Um, um, it's a recommendation to the town board. You can just be informed. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, solar build solar because George is in the waiting room. I think you want to be involved. We'll keep an eye out for him. Doesn't like the Larry was joining me. Oh, he's joining by Zoom. I don't see him though. Oh, yes. No, that's not. It's a train. Okay. Go ahead and make your do you have a presentation. Well, uh, actually, that is supposed to be in the room here. Oh, we're waiting for architects and engineers. Oh, we're going to snow. 
just check my email. I can Oh, yeah, there yeah. is. Okay. This oh, is we have competing in. So. Let's go with Larry. Okay. All right. Hold just a moment. Something different on that other screen. There was another drawing. It's not here. Is that the same screen? Or is that the same screen? It's the, it's a mirror image of that screen so that folks and the audience mirror. could see. Other drawing. Maybe Larry will he could uh, he could screen share a drawing if he wishes. One question I have for you before we start. I drove up through the project yesterday, maybe two questions, and I couldn't find the community center. Is there a sign out there that delineates where it is or anything? So the community center is the building that's right on uh, the corner of Ocean Park Drive and Walker Road. And the way that you live in is there's a big clock tower there. So the building with the clock tower that uh, extended up to the second floor, but the building itself is only one floor. But if it's a community center, then maybe a sign that picks it at that would be good for those of us who don't get credit cards. No, that's probably a good idea. I'll have to make that one too hard. And it seemed there was a lot of garbage floating around. Is that unusual or is that normal? You know, it's uh, pretty unusual for, you know, right now we are finishing up with construction on that. Well, I meant from, so. from, uh, from your renters, lessees, or whatever you call them. Well, you know, we are definitely try our best to keep up on the garbage. It's really not difficult for us. To that. I so didn't I think, think it was, but I thought I was curious as to whether that's something that's happened lately with the opening up of the state or if it's something that you've been running into that problem. Well, you know, we actually are. Nobody wants community. to break down boxes. That's pretty obvious up there. Absolutely. You know, that's part of it is at the end of uh, June, beginning of July, is often our biggest turnover time because people are moving out from yeah. that. Uh, even though we don't have a lot of students on our complex, the corn out market really does set the whole out market for our area. So that's probably part of it because there was something going on. But uh, we're also actually going to be expanding our garbage facilities here uh, pretty soon, too. We noticed a lot of people out walking. So there were a lot of people walking using the roadways and not any particular trail, which doesn't bother me one way or the other. He wants to get exercise and there's a place to go. And it seemed like it was working pretty well. Yeah, you know, it's pretty modern community and trails are connected. House contribute to people getting able to walk their dogs, get to the dog park and that port. Uh, and now that we have it opening up the community center, which so we got the in the community center now, the town center features are uh, still being opened up. We hope to be in our office by the end of the month. We hope that our micro market will be by the end of the month. We've had a couple of food trucks um, who have gone by, and that's been a good success with that. So, you know, we are. Opening it up slowly but surely, I think by the end of the summer, we think it will be full swing. Yep, but a sign that says community center would make me feel better. Well, definitely. You know, we actually have come to, I believe, we put something on the side of the building that will make it very clearly communicated. So uh, we should be able to ask. Thank you. Okay, Larry, did you have something to say? Well, I, pre I hope. I prepared the map out of our discussion of a couple of weeks ago that shows you the how we would like to re redo the recreation exercise trail to utilize a lot of the concrete walks that are already there to add segments that would make it a continuous 0.55 mile circuit instead of a 0.5 mile circuit. And it shows along the way the 12 exercise stations that we spoke about. It includes the two marked cross crossings of Village Circle North that would be uh, painted and maintained by the project. And it, in, and it added the segment that Joe asked for way down on the south end uh, through what's now a picnic area in the woods 
uh, where there would also be three of those exercise stations. So the blue on the map that you have are, would be the added sections that would be built in 2021-22 in the same time frame that buildings number two and number 22 are being built. Um, the, the orange sections already exist and uh, the green sections are the ones that would be built if and when and ever there are pathways beyond this project. So I, I kept the North-South Trail as it was named back way back then, which parallels Warren Road uh, for if that eventuality ever comes to be. Uh, as I mentioned in my write-up, when woodland was developed to the west and the industrial park expanded to the east, there were no connections. So we have nothing to connect to. We have built the eight foot paved walkway, which is the east-west main community trail already, which was envisioned someday to connect a long way, maybe even down all the way to the west, down to the lake. But again, it hasn't gone anywhere beyond Warren Road. Uh, the amenity trails that they were first named and shown in one of the handouts uh, that you received or that were part of this meeting handout are all built as we've progressed. The last ones to be built are north of Village Circle North. Uh, 117 is the last building now. Uh, that's not the last building, but the building that's currently not occupied and under construction is 117. So as a part of completing that building, those amenity trails north of Village Circle North will be built. But the prime consideration is to ask your permission to develop this alternate recreation exercise trail. One notable change would be any of the paved walks, uh, the asphalt paved, any of the walks that were originally gonna be just stone walks will be asphalt paved walks. Uh, so they really, they'll either be concrete walks or asphalt paved walks that make up this entire circuit. Uh, I guess my last point, just based on what you were saying, is people do a lot of walking. They've, I've seen them walk babies, walk dogs, walk themselves. Um, so we think it'll be very well utilized. And to your point, I showed 10th mile markers. If you look real closely, way up in the northwest corner, you would see one mile, 1.1 mile. Then in the very northeast corner, you see 0.2 miles. About halfway down the east side, you see 0.3 miles. Way down on the south end where we added the path that Joe suggested, you see 0.4 miles. And finally, uh, coming up near station 12, uh, uh, right south of the community building is 0.5 miles. Um, so I think I included everything that people suggested. I'm certainly open to any comments or questions at this point. Is it gonna be well delineated the path? It seemed to me from sitting up there with my wife the other day and watching things go on, that people were actually walking up to Village Place and walking down the road, which is nicely treed on both sides. And people were walking their dogs down through there a lot. Mm -hmm. is, is there anything that would direct them over onto this path where you have the markers? And I assume you were gonna put some fitness um, stops along the way. So will there be a way? Well, I think the, the marker, you know, uh, there'll be a sign at the, the uh, community building that marks the start. 
but you know the the talk was to have uh, like a little diagram there that showed what the circuit was, and then as they proceed along the path, they would see the mar the various markers or the exercise stations. But there would be at least a comprehensive drawing there where they start. Uh, and I think once people get familiar with it, uh, I mean, we could have, now that you've asked, I mean, I'm thinking aloud, uh, we could have like three of those signs uh, spaced along, you know, from the beginning and then uh, two others along the path. So where people would most likely enter uh, if they lived, for instance, in the very Northeast part, uh, there could be another sign up in that area and then one farther down in the Southeast corner uh, showing the overall route. Is what I would force people into going in a certain direction. If they want to walk on the road, they're going to walk on the road. Uh, well, uh, Rocco, Rocco, rest his soul, built all these roads with super generous shoulders on them. Uh, and that was just his way, any roads he built, any place. Uh, so we have much wider shoulders than the average town highways. I mean, those shoulders are 10 feet wide. Uh, you know, the typical shoulder is four feet. <laughs> so. Uh, the village place didn't seem to be highly trapped. You know, I think one other thing about the plan about this plan, I was looking at it here on my own, is uh, that the areas that we have to do, a lot of them are, are actually connect some of these buildings to the greater trail itself. So like building 6, 12, 18 will be connected through that building. One seventeen to be connected through that as well, building one six. So I think there's six buildings in there in total where uh, the blue parts that will be built between now and uh, you know the end of uh, buildings two and twenty two being completed are going to connect a little bit more and make it a bit more of a uh, entire path that will be more uh, easily accessible to people a little bit easier to tell if this is where you go to your recreational level. Right now, one of the things you may not have seen is there's a dog park that's east of Village Place, and the the more expanded basketball court is there too. So some of that, if you saw people walking with dogs, they may have been headed to the dog park that's there. Yeah, I saw people walking their dogs, their husbands, and their kids. I didn't mean get a smile out of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been an interesting watching the whole meeting. <laughs> yeah, anybody else have any questions? Brings back memories of all those zoning meetings I sat through. <laughs> That's really cool. In terms of a pleasant walking experience, I think one of the reasons one of the people, one of the reasons people go along the village place is that you can go pretty directly. Um, you don't have to jog around or anything. And if you've drawn in that you might be able to do a north-south trail, I don't know why you don't want to do that right now. You make a big grand circle around the place. Well, you know, I spoke the last time. We don't think it's the safest place to have a walkway, but if if that's what the town wants in the future is why I committed to it. Uh, we don't really think it's a safe place to have a walkway. Uh, I'm sorry, I've, I've been having difficulty hearing the people from you down to the end of the table all night. So if you could repeat uh, what your question was, I'm sorry. I think that um, trying to get between the trees and the road, unless you're walking on the road, there's a ditch there. And so the but then why put it into something you're going to do in the future if you can't do it? 
No, no, you guys are talking about two different things. Oh, I'm talking about the, what's labeled the green thing, labeled North South oh. Trail. Over on Warren Road. Yeah. yeah. Parallel to Warren oh, I got Road. you. I'm, I'm again. I'm having a very hard time. If you could pull the microphone closer to you, I, I might be able to hear better. Yeah. You, you've indicated you can do the North South Trail at some point. It's a very nice long straight trail. Why don't you do it now? Well, it's You're not. Here. It's just adjacent to a high speed road right now. It connects to nothing north or south of the project. Uh, and there was great hopes that there would be pathways all over the town. So the only way I could see splitting the difference here was to say we would build it when it goes somewhere. Uh, and we would connect to it so it was easy enough to get to it from the, the trail that I'm proposing, which, you no, know, we don't see people going out there and using it when they can have a, a, a much quieter, safer route available to them. And, you know, I think just to sort of follow up on that, particularly the point of this is to try to make sure we preserve the ability to connect to our exterior trail that goes to other places. But while we're doing that, try to make a trail that is better, both circular and one that we think will just walk better through the project in general, you know, as opposed to one that goes out a little bit further, you know, I'm not exactly sure how many feet out further it would be, and wouldn't necessarily be for any utility in terms of, uh, you know, being able to get easier exercise and being able to, you know, take a look at our ponds, being closer to the building, connecting to the buildings. I think that the new one makes it a bit easier for us to, you know, have a uh, very walkable interior trail while preserving that option to have that one on the right south in case the uh, trails and the people who are neighboring us are able to get the plan uh, pulled off. No. So I've, I'm just noticing a little bit of a detail, though, um, in your plan development area, which is it does say that pedestrian walkways and trails shall be at least 25 feet from the exterior boundary lines of the PPA. And so I'm assuming that this is running along the property line. Is that correct? The green line. That's where yeah. it was shown in the beginning. Yes. OK, so is this this waiver is also seeking. Um, Okay. The waiver is saying the waiver is saying that we'll keep that walkway in the plan, and we will build it when it connects to something. But that's not twenty-five feet off the property line, which is what the PDA calls for. So that's well. Not really well, I, you know, it, I I don't. You have a in that handout that you have, or in any of the site plans that were approved that's that's where it's shown i have not moved that yeah. with this oh. drawing so yeah maybe and, you know to get 25 feet off of the road it it would be impossible in terms of where the landscaping is or where the where the parking is uh in front of the community building and the off what was the office building and you would be, again, back to our conversation, you would be right on top of the people, uh, people's patios on 116. So it's, but this I mean, anything can be done, but uh, it's, I, I left it there as a, 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 a gesture that if we wind up with, a walkway pathway up Warren Road that extends all the way up to Asbury, let's say, or extends all the way down to Cherry Road, uh, that we would build it to be a part of that. 
uh, that I don't, I, I guess I'm not trying to be difficult, but saying, you know, what we want to accomplish with these recreation stations and the sort of bringing things a little more to the interior or what we're doing, it, it doesn't really fit. But so we appeared more like we, we wanted to leave that as an opportunity down the line and so that it didn't appear like we were trying to get out of doing something, which we're not. Yep, go ahead. Did that answer your question? No. I'm ready for a lot of things. Well, wait, Larry, let's finish this up first. Okay. If it could be done at some time in the future. Except that we, it's not required to be done in the PDA at the present time. I thought that was part of the PDA, a peripheral trail. No, it's got to ah. be 25 feet off the property line interior, according ah. to the PDA. And so that one's right out on the road, and they feel that that's not safe, number one. And But it could be built if there's more trails that end up connecting to it. So it but the trail on the inside of the property is going to be built and is already built. Yeah. And it takes the place of that green one instead. Okay. No, you don't get it? I do. <laughs> okay, um, Larry. I was going to say that I do understand and I don't disagree. I, I think that putting a, a North Salt Trail right on the side of the road, particularly since there's nothing for it to connect to right now, is kind of pointless. I do like the idea that the internal trail, the circular trail that's left, uh, which took me a minute, but I, I believe I understand it now. I think it does a nice job of fulfilling the spirit, if not the actual requirement, for a uh, walking trail or exercise space on the PDA. I, think I was going to make the point that I kind of like it. And if they want to leave in the possibility of adding that linear trail along Warren Road at some point in time, I've got no problem with that. I kind of like what they've done here. And I can't believe how many people I saw walking the other day when I was up there. That was pretty nice. So I, I think that we get into the same thing that Guy was saying, and we get a little bit of a chicken and egg problem. And so you get the, well, if they build it, then we'll build our part. But I mean, who's going to build first? Um, I don't know of any other PDAs in the area. But this, this is the first one. And so I would expect that they would build a trail that others would then connect to, rather than rather than saying there's no nothing else to connect to yet. Um, that, that that's the same argument that all the neighbors would have. Well, why would I build? There's nothing to connect to. Yet. Wait, they have built the trail here that fulfills the PDA requirements. So putting that one is extra. Is something that they could do that's extra. But there isn't any reason to just run it down the side of Warren Road, which is a high-speed road, I, unless, are you suggesting they do that instead of the interior trail? No, I, I think that they're both um, serve essential purposes. I think that, uh, you know, between this green north-south trail and high-speed Warren Road, you've got a ditch. So that separates the traffic from the walking trail. Um, I think they both serve kind of separate purposes, one being more of an exercise trail and more of an interior trail, and the other more of a potential connector to neighboring properties. Because I, I could see people walking down the, the street who, you know, they're gonna walk down the edge of this property. And they're not going to walk in between the buildings and around the exercise trail to get from north to south or south to north. If they're walking down the street. Right. 
but it's believe me, without Im without improvement, they're not going to walk where that green line is shown now. That that's a bank. They would have to be leveled up. It can be done to the uh, to. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, ma'am. But it can be done. But it's it's going to take. You're not going to walk there now. I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, you're going to be walking on a bank, for instance, right opposite where the community building is. You're you're going to be walking on a bank. You're going to be walking on a bank right next to 116 or next to 117. That's got to be leveled up if you're going to walk there. Uh, so it's not. It's not anything anybody wants to do. Uh, I, you know, pe people use a lot of that amenity trail right now. And that's sort of an indicator to me that they would use these internal pathways. But to your point of chicken and egg, I mean, the town's got to make a commitment if they want that to happen farther up. Warren Road because there's private residences north of Farrell Road there. Uh, the town's got to make a commitment south of here, you know, because there's houses south of Village Circle South or the industrial park property on the corner there where the opposite the UPS. You know, if they make that commitment, we're saying we'll make the commitment. But as it is, we built this eight foot walkway and nothing happened on the cardamom land and nothing's going to happen on the Krasik land unless it's part of the planning west of here. So I'll shut up. How far off is I'm sorry. How far off of Warren Road is this green line? A green line right now off the curb line uh, because I've stood on the bank where the property pin is. Uh, is about seven and a half feet at the most uh, off the curb line because there's a cur there's a concrete gutter there. Uh, that's next to the, the lane itself and then a curb. And there's a bank there. Okay, my bad. It's uh, excluding roadways and pedestrian walkways and trails. My bad. Uh, so it's ex the 25 feet uh, setback is excluding roadways and pedestrian trail. So they could theoretically put it at zero lot line. And I did also just want to mention that um, the PDA does actually reference the north-south trail and it says the main north-south trail connecting the site to Warren Road shall also be blacktop wind built and accessible to the public and once connected to other offset trails it too shall be dedicated to the town either by easement or in fee in the sole discretion of the town. So it is addressed in the PDA. So that would mean from what you're saying, the PDA says it should go in. Yeah. So. Uh, when, when built. Uh, it's an indeterminate built. amount of time as, as I'm reading the, the yeah. plan development area. Except the uh, last amendment that they had to build as part of the final project. The perimeter trail and all those things had to be built. So when you say perimeter trail, are we saying that you're, the PDA is demanding a trail around the perimeter of the property, the property line? I'm pretty sure that there was a reference to something that was drawn in before. That's, if you'll excuse me, that's just wrong. Because you've got, you've got a site plan here where, there, where there's uh, softscape and hardscape being built in. And then the trail has been put in, the, the trail that uh, Larry has shown on this plan is a perimeter trail along the whole property. It just doesn't go off to the edge of the property. Therefore, you're not encroaching on 
somebody's land that's right on the other side of the property line, but it does follow the landscaping around the site. I, I, would, I would say that that would fulfill my definition of a perimeter trail. But then again, I've only been in construction for a year. I think it was referencing that that you're running around the edge. I think, I'm not saying that's the way it has to be. I'm saying, I think that's the way it has to be. That's the last one about a year ago. And they're requesting a waiver from that provision, right. essentially, yes. So the argument, the, the argument I think that's being made is, do we see this as substituting for the original plan? And so does we, it do we have a copy of the original plan? Uh, Larry, would you do a screen share of the original PDA plan? I don't need to screen share. Yeah. If I could add one thing, With so all we're got other there, trails, it's green. Up in Wisconsin, we connect them to the perimeter trail that's shown on these plants. I think the question is just what did we require of them and what are they asking to change? And see, they were suggesting that the perimeter trail that went around the edge was not required. I think it was as of the last amendment from the town board a year ago. Okay, the waiver was from all the trails specified on the PDA will be completed before the final certificate of occupancy shall be issued for whichever building is built last. Two, two and 22 haven't been built yet. And that's why I'm saying we would, con we would complete this alternate circuit by the time those COs were issued for those two buildings. So I haven't changed that time frame again. I left this North South Trail on there rather than say the recreation circuit would be the total substitution of it just so it could happen if the plans ever go anywhere. But the plans have gone nowhere in seven years. There was a lot of enthusiasm when we got this approved that there would be pathways up and down Warren Road. Nothing has happened. What was the original plan? Do you have a copy of the original plan there? there? I, I, I don't have it here. I know it was in your, you know, when you open up the, the attachment for the planning board agenda item, it's included in that packet that's attached there. It shows, it shows the, the east-west community trail, the amenity trails, and the recreation trail. And it does include that north-south trail that I show there, but I clearly meant this 0.55 circuit that's in blue and orange as the alternate. Uh, and as I sat from our discussion the last time, I added back the north-south trail along Warren Road so that if the town objectives north and south to here ever see the light of day, we would be committed to building that. I, for one, am not seeing anything that tells you the original trails that were agreed to according to the PDA. If I recall correctly, the trail went around outside the buildings. Through everybody's backyard. Okay. Well, well that now, now, that, now that those buildings are built the way they are, yes. This is for the people on ground. Or the back, off the back patio, so the people on the patio. Yeah, I'm not all that kind of trails going through people's backyards too much, but I don't know where I'm going to put it. Pardon? That's why it's a PDA. Everybody's on top of everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that's means? why this alternate was done, so it was paid out of the backyard. 
I mean, it's hard. Let's see, let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't know if this is right. You, you had it in the uh, planning board uh, packet that, you know, when you clicked on the, this, the packet you provided, it, it's included in that. Yeah, we don't have it in our, for this week, we don't have it in our. Uh, it was in the electronic. It was in the electronic. Yes. Oh, okay. I just can't get it to download to my phone. Yeah, <laughs> Am I looking at the right one? No. no, it was a very green with like red dots through. That's why I was looking at the back. I don't remember right. missing that. Uh, in the yeah. agenda, in the agenda item is, is where it is. Okay. I mean, this is the packet that was submitted. That's the packet, but the in the agenda item. In the agenda item, that original map is shown. All right. Can you split your screen? And I just have it. no way of showing it to you here. I... All right. So you're saying that if we go to, so if you're saying we go to middles, parents, we're going to find it right here. So, Yes. One of the last minute. Oh, oh, okay. This one. Bingo. Okay, got it. Okay. Well, yes. Okay. I believe, well, I think this is what was approved. Maybe. Okay, so you were looking for them side by side. Is that what you're asking? Okay, hold on a second. Let's go this way. No. So, no, that's kind of the best I can do. Yeah, the bottom one is turned side. Yeah. It's, um, Yes, they're not the right. They're not so oriented right. the same way. Okay, so well, we've already got that. One. Okay, you got that one. This so one. Right. Okay, so we want to do this. This is up here. Is that correct? Oh my gosh! Go away! <laughs> go away! This I don't know why this blue is not going. Okay. Okay, that's kind of the best we can get. Okay, so. So north is to the left. Oh my gosh, again? I just did this. Because yeah, it goes past people. There we go. Walls. Okay, hold on. But it's, it does provide the length. It provides the exercise spots. It's hard to breathe. It um, seems a little more chopped up. But I think that's the way we were, we were thinking. Right. Do we yeah. say, okay, you didn't build it the way you said you were going to you have it equivalent? So my suggestion would be, if we're going to just go with the interior loop, would be to have them add the two spurs at this point, the north and south green spurs, because that would bring you right out to the street. That, that wouldn't seem to be a, a huge burden to add those. No, that would be, I mean, I thought we had a good discussion the last time. I'm open to that, but I... You know, I'm open to anything, but I'm being honest with you and saying why I thought I left that in there uh, to to achieve you know, a more global purpose someday. But certainly, if you're asking to add those two connections now, so if that happens, I mean that's that's minor. Maybe the one in the circle as well. Yeah. 
Village Circle North. You mean. Yeah, the Village Circle North. You could yeah. add that one and then one at the north end and one at the south. And that would kind of give you feeders out to the street. Rocco, Larry, you guys own a parcel to the north. And to the west side is the private owner. It looks like Hopkins. And to the east side is the other apartment, Ivy Ridge. You're probably going to develop that parcel to the north someday. Can you put a, a future trail between 119 and 113 or 113 and 40 to connect to that if you develop that in the future? Or are you following on yeah, if Yeah, I've, if you're saying it can do that now for future connection, that is certainly reasonable. Uh, green, green, green stripe in there. So if you develop it in the future, that parcel, that you will be following that trail connection to the um, the relocated trail along 119, 113, and 40. You follow what I mean? Yes. So you're going to add a, a future spur from that to the north that would connect your development to the north. Should you develop that someday? That we can do happen. that in this time frame. I mean, it, I guess for now, people could just walk up to the end of it and yeah, you know, I mean, you know, observe well, a natural space, but uh, well, I'll say now correct me if I'm wrong, is that that would be the green to that is yeah. the really key, not necessarily. Yeah, yeah, right exactly. Yeah. So if you develop that to the north, then you connect through your other parts of the exactly. like by stage. Yeah, even though I'm not committing something uh, to do in west, there's some connecting then right. So doing it by way. Yeah. Just that would be the most logical place to do it, uh Al. So um, yeah, like by station or, or, or even along one side. I don't know. You'd want to go along that future road back in there and then cut back behind 40. But I think it'd be easier just to put one. Uh, that's that's tough territory there. But where you first mentioned is flat and easy to accomplish. Uh, yeah, for green future spur for the future. All right. But if I'm understanding Dean correctly, he'd like to see you build now the green spur to the north that goes out the Warren Road. Next to 119 there, the west of 119. And then if I understand that the other one is south of number two. And one at Village just, Circle North. Yeah, just north of 116 here. Just a path that goes out in all three cases that goes out to Warren Road. Would allow people to go out there and walk if they so decided. That's that sounds reasonable to me. Uh, that sounds reasonable. Okay. I think we're in agreement. Yes, Bill. deciding which way they want to go. And so Joe, if we were to look at the south buildings there, like 18, 12, and 6, where you've got this uh, exercise trail in the orange, and then you've got a sidewalk in front of the building. Right, you've got the blue trail across the bottom. Right. It doesn't really connect to anything else except walking to park cars. Or right, so what I'm saying is you, you could take that path right along the front of the building, if you just took that sidewalk to the west there at the end of building six and 
simply attached it in, it would give you an alternate where you don't have to go through the parking. Right, but I think you want to take that um, alternate that you've got down below because you can already do that. And, and somehow connect it more securely to the rest of the trail. So if you don't want to walk across everybody's front porch, which is why that was added, you're not walking you know, around you know, all these cars. It's, it's fine if I'm walking by myself, but if I'm trying to take the baby carriage along, going between parked cars is really difficult. So do you think it just needs markers? Yeah, or some kind of markers or some kind of extension, something, something that gives the pedestrian the right to be there. Like the crosswalk marks. Like the crosswalk marks. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're, you're talking about like a, a stanchion or a bolster or something that maybe has a light on the top of it or something. You mark it that this is not a parking spot, this is a crosswalk spot. A Miller Circle North got a dispensive paint of water there down Miller Circle North. Yeah. Is that the path that you're talking about? Yeah. Is that very. It's my dark glass paint. We're talking about doing the same thing. On the middle one. Well, that's gravel, so you may have to do something different up here. Yeah, you can't walk there very, very easy. Right here, you know, I might look a little awkward, but I can see this one. Yeah, you got to make those connections. You look right now. Yeah. All right, yeah. better. Does that sound uh, anything difficult for you in terms of uh, handling those walks in? No. No, it's. That's a good suggestion. So yeah, I mean, if you put a short four foot post on either side of the uh, trail on both sides of the, the gravel pet road there. Yeah, something just that, something they don't park right here. Like, and we go with trails all the time, all over the place, saying this is the entrance to the trail, don't park here. This area is not what we're marking here. Trail entrance. Yeah, maybe some kind of walk on it or doing demarcations of like a post or something. Would we'll probably use it for that. Is everybody in agreement? I agree with you. Maybe people sometimes have to show up for Some of us can be shown where to walk, we still can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Do we have a meeting here? Just recommending recommendations to the town board. If you so would someone like to propose a recommendation to the town board? With the with the modification. Yeah. Agreed on tonight. Did you get all that ready? <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah, talked about Stripe, striping on the at the south, right? To both the east and the west. Striking and bollards, and we'll add those links to Warren Road. Uh, so I'll revise the map to show them in blue being accomplished uh, before 22 is uh, commissioned, I guess. Uh, is a good word. One green future. And then the future, the future connection between 40 and 113 to the north. Uh, Sounds good. And is there a second to that? Yeah. Is this an all in favor thing? Yep. It's my motion. All in favor. Aye. Opposed. Thank great. you for your patience, and thank you for your patience too. Okay. Deb's happy about the trail. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your public service. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, can we go back to Cuba Vista? Is Tony happy? All right. Dog. Get it done. Get her done. Okay. Admitting okay. Uh, projects. Okay. George, come back. Yeah. Yep. Me. Me. Right. Oh. 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 Wake up, George. That's that's okay. We just want to do it.
Yes. I'm, I'm not happy. You cut me off. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yep, we apologize, but we'd already made the decision to skip you. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now, Jerry? Yep, we can. Okay. Real quick, because it's, it's the end of the night and everybody wants to go home. So I see that on the agenda, we are updating progress to date. So basically, in the set that you got, we broke apart Wayne's drawings and made them into discrete pieces so it was easier to read. Um, the site plan, we moved some light poles. Grading, we lowered the eastern units and reworked some of the grading and got the grading to work better in the road. Uh, utility, we added, you show the water lines and, the, and where we hope the transformers, and I say we'll put the transformers. We created a planning plan and a unit planning plan. So around the units, We've shown each unit to be landscaped the same. There's a range of plants and, and bushes. Um, Scott wanted stuff that's one, vigorous, and two, deer resistant. If you look at this stuff, you got very, you know, there's a wajilia that you'll have flowers in the spring. You got burning bush that'll be red in the fall. Uh, the boxwood obviously stays green. We've got maple trees for shade and crab trees for some color. Um, Wayne has, has been on vacation, but obviously he's back. You saw him at Morabito. Um, he and Dondi are working through Dondi's questions on the stormwater. So the only thing that's come up and we've got to look at it is at the hammerhead, whether we can grade that or whether we're going to end up putting a retaining wall along that north wall to hold the grade. Um, that's something we'll look at this week. So I guess my big thing is questions and what more do we need to do other than really get the stormwater hammered between Dondi and Wayne. We got that 26 feet of clearance now. Was there anything other than the uh, conifer buffer providing uh, shielding from the uh, people on the east side having the second floor windows looked into by people driving down what's that? Larry, I couldn't totally hear you, Larry. The buffer on the east side? Well, yeah, on the east side. One of the things that I talked to Scott about in our last get together was it looked like people driving along the woods edge would be able to look right into the apartment windows. No, well, they'll be down, but the those conifers, I mean, that's going to screen looking into there. Say again? The the conifers we showed along the east side that that are basically along the back of those east units, I mean, the point is. They'll provide privacy year round rather than a deciduous tree. And the units down, um, I got to look quick. And we don't have what grades on Woods Edge, but they're sitting down and those trees will be up. So they're actually on a bank. So you're building up a bank between what's that and the back and then they're going on top of the bank. That's, that's what the, uh, that's kind of what uh, one B shows. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a bit, there's a bank, there's, um. 96, 94. The building gets cut down in to get, there's so much slope from east to west that the two buildings, basically the lower, the west buildings get filled and the, and the east buildings get cut. So then there's a cut grade there. So that slope's going to be fairly steep and probably not very mobile. So we'll probably end up putting a few more trees in there by the fall of just trying to mulch the whole bank. I would, I would say if you look, the ground floor of the east units is 91, and the top of the bank is like 97, and you get eight foot trees, 10 foot trees going up. So you screen most of the second floor anyway. I know that's one of the things we discussed last time. I just wanted to 
make sure that that was still under consideration. I, I couldn't hear you. Larry, I don't know what, what it is about the things down there, but it's hard to hear down at the far end of the room. Can you hear me now? No, kind of. You're break when you when you get real close, you break up. Yeah, that's uh Yeah, the reason I wanted to cover that is that that's what we were talking about last time. Uh, we wanted to make sure that that protection was still there or protection yeah. was still there. Yeah, if anything, what Scott's indicating is because it's going to be difficult to mow, we may actually end up putting more trees in there. So it'll be even denser. Okay. So we can show it that way. Sure. We, we, another one where we talk about a canopy on the uh, the uh, water meter or mailbox yeah. building kids yeah. get out the element. Yeah, so, I, if I'm trying to think, if you look at the earlier thing, we showed that building, and you've got like a four or five, four foot overhang on the west side on the on the east side of that. So, so if you look at the site plan, you can see the building, and you can see the little thing to the east. That's all under roof. Okay, so there is a canopy coming out. Yes, yes. So the mailbox is under canopy, and if kids are standing there waiting for the bus, they're under cover. Okay, that's all good. Any other questions, comments? Um, yeah, I just wanted to. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. So, um, just the. Uh, to discuss the uh, trash uh, receptacles and uh, the kind of rubbish pickup. I think you said you were um, demonstrating a solution and then um, just wanted to confirm that um, a town engineer would like to see that hammerhead end before the north property line. I think we discussed that previously, but. Um, the trash, okay. So our position on the trash is these units have garages. They're no different than Carnival's townhouses. They're no different than small houses. You, the trash can go in the in the uh, garages that are there and go out on the street. If they want to take it out on the street, when the county picks up, they can put it there. They always had the possibility, as Scott said earlier, of taking it up to Scott's dumpsters up the street. But it's no. This is not like a lot of the apartments where there's no gar garages. I mean, like what you just talked about with Lucendi's project, there aren't any garages. So this one is no, you know, I got a one car garage, like lots of houses in Lansing. Okay, uh, just to confirm then that means that you're looking, that the project will be emplacing 16 trash cans plus the equivalent in recycling. Yeah. Yeah. At the curve each, okay. I mean, you're paying the county to pick it up. I mean, is it any different than in the in the townhouse condominiums up at the on Warrens, where you've got 16 units or so, or you will have? Um, at least, you know, in some ways, we talked about we didn't want a dumpster with stuff, you know, between smell, rodents, stuff blowing away. You know, put it out when it's trash day, just like you do at your house. Where, where are you going to put that? Is that going to be by that meter box, then where's where's the pickup going to be? And there will be there not area. I'm I'm assuming well, the garbage trucks obviously could turn around also at the, um, well they won't come in there because that's going to be considered private. So it'll probably be across from the from the meter box or the meter room. That doesn't sound too good. So we're thinking that they need some kind of a hard surface concrete pad or something where everybody can put their trash right. cans or a pickle. Right. But why? You you don't at your house. Yeah, but well, we I don't have 32 of them or 32 <laughs> packages outside in the same spot. 16 cans is a lot. But and you don't have available. 16 different people who are renting come out and set their stuff, set their garbage be responsible to carry their garbage out there and pick up their garbage cans and take them back. It's all single use. I do remember when we were originally talking about this, Scott mentioned that he had a 
he suggested that he could uh, pick the garbage up and take it up to his uh, other facility. So he did his own garbage pickup, like he suggested the last time. Our tenants, our tenants bring garbage back to the shop, but we obviously, there was some sort of law or issue that CJ is addressing that we can't, we have to have some sort of service Scott, on site. Scott, as part of his lease, allows tenants without a garbage tag. So they save the money on that, but they're responsible for taking it up to SDM. But garbage, the garbage truck won't come into the project. I mean, I was under the that the garbage truck would pick it up in front of each unit like it would. I don't, yeah, I don't know, Jerry, because I don't think that's going to be considered a public road. So, so if they come in. Well, if, you guys, if we need to have something on site, we can just put a dumpster down at the lower just the access to the back for the maintenance for the pond, the lower driveway. Cause you're not gonna wanna put a dumpster right on top of all these units. So it'd be at the lower, it'd be at the west end driveway. I think that it's not gonna work very good to have 16 people carrying their garbage out to Woods Edge Road. Okay. Or keep the distance driving. Well, what Scott has found in the past is people come from all over and take it to. But well, we just put it. Can we, we just put a dumpster enclosure down at the lower driveway, right? It's on site. Yeah. Screen it. Or screen the garbage, the place where they're going to take the garbage cans to. But to have them just sitting out there, summer, winter, fall, and spring. Yeah, we can just put a small eight-way fenced-in area at the lower driveway. I said, if it road, the tenants have to take the garbage across that bridge on the corner of the road, and it's a mess there. Right? It's going to blow up. It's going to, I mean, <coughs> I can see that affecting the neighbors somewhat. All right, we'll just build an enclosure down on the lower access area. So it's away from the units, though. But it's on Cuba Vista Drive. Okay, and I think we're still also awaiting uh, just a rendering uh, of the project. Something static is fine, but it doesn't need to be a super fancy 3D thing, but I think we're hoping to at least a view from East Shore Drive if not one also from East Shore Hunter. from East Shore CJ from East Shore Drive. All like, you can see is the dollar store. I mean, but you get, from the sound. No, but you got you got trees that are gonna you know eventually grow up. I, okay. I don't have anybody that can do that render. Like I mean, if you're truly gonna do it to scale, you're gonna see from East Shore Drive, you're gonna see a very small little thing. Okay, great. And then um, I think that would be helpful for the board to see. Yes. What do you do? I don't know. How are we going to propose the mosque that building? The, and at what point on East Shore Drive? Is that at any given point you look at the dollar store or the there's a whole other building and a whole other site ahead of it that are elevated probably 30 feet above ours? Yeah, I think uh, the intent is just to demonstrate the map. I'm just superimposing a little picture. It means this. Yeah, it's a yeah. scenic byway, sir. We shouldn't have put the dollar store there. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, in any event, it would just, you know, it doesn't have to be super fancy, but just something for the board to wrap their head around the mass in the building. It's all okay. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? For now. Oh. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. We need to come up with a solution on the garbage, though. Big hole. <laughs> That's generally my <laughs> A big hole, and I'll get some of that fuel from a rabbit hole and put it in there every so often. All right. Thank you, George. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. I have a question to see you.
Okay, hold just a moment, please. Okay, yeah. Uh, what would you turn down? And uh, I wondered if you knew whether it was because of access or, or what it was, but they did turn it down to a car that fit their criteria. And I kind of like to know what that was. Now, the, the other shoe is it drops is Dollar General is suing for. <laughs> but, but I kind of like to know, you know, what they used as a uh, as a as a reason. Oh. So the rationale for the denial of a second. Yeah, that, I'm here. Okay, yeah. I'm not familiar. Uh, Where is that? No, Mike. Chad Blanton keeps me busy, so. Um, well, okay. you follow all your details. <laughs> I, well, you know, I try. When you see stuff going on, so kind of even wonder. Is it legit? Is it something that we should be thinking about? Or I have a good friend who's on the board over in Homer, so I'll give you yeah, a call. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's an excellent question. I think we can pretty easily dig up that uh, resolution that denied the project, um, and certainly uh, council, who's still on here, could um, perhaps can speak to that, but um, he can certainly take a look at it, and um, we can let you know whether that has reasonable legs and the full record and it's likely to be challenged. I just so. wonder if it's something that we should have considered and didn't, uh, or not just for them, but for, for other purposes. I kind yeah, of like okay. to look around me as I'm driving through the countryside. I will pick it up. Our, you, know, you can sue anybody. Do you have a, do you have a reason? Are they suing to intimidate? Or are they suing because they have a reasonable chance of winning too? I'll add like when you see. I gotta talk to them tomorrow. Yeah, I'm happy to dig up the resolution and have counsel take a look and see what his um, opinion would be relative to their full record and what their chances might be. I'm I don't know how much you would want to the speculate cynic, on a review the process. Cynic in me, think, the cynic in me says that they're doing it just to try to, to scare the village. I don't think they'll have any luck with it. Yeah, I kind of agree, but uh, you know, that's any more comments, questions? Can we adjourn? Thank you yeah. for sitting here. Yeah. Oh, this. and by the way, I, I was I neglected mean, to you introduce you to Heather. You guys have never met Heather. Yeah. So this is Heather Dry, sorry. I think it's fantastic we can you your own table. Well, you know, <laughs> so so we want to be sitting back down there. Like that. <laughs> All okay. right, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you.